All right. It is June. Sorry, not June anymore. It's July. It's July 5th, 2018. And you are listening to the No Cell Society Show. I'm your host, Gerard G. Kaihui. And joining me again this week is my good buddy, my partner in crime, my tag team partner for the evening, Dave Drashev. Hey, Dave. How's it going? How's it going, everybody? Good. So we had a pretty interesting week last week. Uh, well, this week was Independence Day, and we all got to celebrate it. Um, we, like I said, we kind of relaunched this show, um, putting out new content here. Uh, one of the things that we forgot to kind of mention that we saved for this week was the passing of uh, a local native here in Colorado, uh, Big ba- Big Van Vader, also known as Leon Baby Bull power white and uh got some other news as well uh, former tough enough contestant winner uh, matt capitelli also passed away so we're going to kind of reflect a little bit on uh, both of those gentlemen tonight let's start first with the uh, big van vader um for me uh i was actually living in japan when i saw vader's debut and that was kind of crazy because here, you know, Antonio Inoki was kind of untouchable. Here comes this guy and he had the big Mastodon HR Geiger looking mask kind of thing. And he kind of carried out to the ring and, you know, he put it down and you know, do his Vader hand signal. And then the, the steam would shoot out. So it was, it was a very interesting look, but it, it took me a while because I actually watched uh, Leon baby bullpower um in the AWA when I was a kid, I actually saw him wrestle a little bit there. So it took me a while to put the two and two together. And, uh, you know, I thought, uh, the guy was a beast, was a monster, you know, definitely his, his win over Inoki was one of those crazy, like, wow, you'd never think that would happen. You know, that's just, that's like Hulk Hogan losing in the eighties. It was a rare occurrence. And so, you know, I, I got a chance to, um, to watch and follow him through WCW, WWE. I, I always thought he was an entertaining big man. And it wasn't until later on that I was able to kind of see that uh, infamous Stan Hansen versus Vader match where um, Vader got his eyeball knocked out <laughs> and had to shove back in his face. Uh, but, you know, despite being in the Colorado independent wrestling scene, um, I've never had a chance to... Uh, work with Vader or be around Vader, although there's several guys that um, that I know that have had the opportunity, as well as a couple of guys that were actually trained or, you know, or I guess were uh, one particular wrestler that was actually guided by Vader when, when he was in Japan. So, I mean, that was my, you know, kind of brief run with, with Vader uh, was through peripheral friends. Uh, how about you, Dave? Um, I remember seeing him... Uh early on well not early on but but i mean there, there's a really awesome period in wcw back in the the like mid 90s um you know before like hulk hogan came in and that they they kind of started going that direction with the company but uh, i remember there there were a lot of really good feuds between like him and sting him and flair uh him and, and, and cactus jack right. uh i mean that, that's one of the ones that sticks out and i mean it, it you know I don't know. It kind of ha- has like like a, a following and not a following, depending on who you ask. But but like I just I always remember like like you know it was Cactus Jack. He he got you know power bombed on the concrete by Vader and, and it caused amnesia. And, and there's that whole storyline. <laughs> but it was like oh man, what a heel! But this guy was so cool because again he, he had this mask. I remember he, right. he he would like come down the uh, the ramp back when they used to do like a uh, clash of the champions and he's like talking to the camera you know like john cena does today but but he's talking to like jesse ventura who's like the heel announcer and he's like asking him what time it is what time it is you know he's like what, what time is it it's fair time and um i just remember thinking like, like man this is a bad dude because i mean like it, it, he he looked like he he was out there to not mess around and um Looked like he was like a legit bad dude. Right. I mean, he's, a, he's a big man, so I don't know if he's gonna like win any, you know, sprints or cardiac, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, exercise <laughs> events. But but I mean, as far as like, like two guys in a square circle, like like hitting each other, he was just like, oh man, it looks like he's really knocking the crap out of these guys. 
And um, I mean, it's just, it's one of those things where I mean, there, there's good stuff too, where, where it's, uh, you know, like the White Castle of Fear with him and, and, and <laughs> that was vicious good. <laughs> person. <laughs> I mean, like, if you like like bad movies like I do, you, you can watch that, that footage like on YouTube and you're just like, uh -huh. oh, this is awful, man. Right. But, uh, you know, you see some of the stuff with him and Flair. And again, you know, it's like, like he's like this pure heel versus Sting, who's this pure baby face. And it's like, you couldn't have asked for a better feud, you know? I'm surprised White Castle didn't even sue, you know, over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I just remember, and then i saw a few months ago there there was a uh an episode of baywatch where it was like him and kevin sullivan and rick flair versus like i, I guess it was like uh jimmy hart and hulk hogan versus you know or, or and, and like you know david hasselhoff so there's like the, the baby face side but it was just like oh man it's kevin sullivan with his his big old painted on eyebrows and right. rick flair is going into nature mode and, and here, here's vader just being like like a, a, a badass but um, yeah, man. I mean, being being like a horror fan, like seeing that that dude come down in the mask, and you're just like, this thing is shooting like like smoke everywhere. You're just like, what the hell is this? This is right. awesome. You know? What about this time in WWE? I mean, it just kind of seemed like who you, know, um, you compare Vader to w WCW Vader versus WWE Vader. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like they they dropped the ball severely on him in WWE. I feel like because maybe he wasn't like a Vince guy. You know, like he came right. kind of with a, a, a known past and reputation. Um, they didn't give him a fair shake. Um, but, but I mean, there, there, there's, there's good stuff. Like I remember like when he first came in, there's this confrontation with a uh, gorilla monsoon, who's like the, the, I guess the replacement for like Jack Tunney is like president of WWF at the time. Right. And, and it was just like, Oh man, he Bader just like, uh, what did he, he like, like avalanched him like in the, the corner. You know, and you're just like, oh no, Gorilla Monsoon's this like 60 or 70 year old guy, even though he's like, you know, a former pro wrestler and a big dude in himself, you know, but, but, but he kind of like, like put Vader over strong, you know? Yep. And, and, and then, you know, you, you get to like where, where he's like, like gonna wrestle Shawn Michaels, and you're just like, man, this is a great, like David versus Goliath. You've got this skinny little dude who does like lots of flippy flops and is, you know, all over the place. And you've got this big, you know, raging bull just, just, just kind of, you know, put the shellac into him. And, um, you know, it, it didn't, it didn't work out like, like mm -hmm. I, I've read stuff on that since, you know, his passing. And I, I guess that, uh, transition kind of went to Sid later yep. in that same year. Was that like 96 or something like that? Mm -hmm. Maybe 95, yeah. somewhere in there. Um, but it, it's right around the time where it's like, you know, Bret Hart has left to go like make Western TV shows or something like Lonesome <laughs> Dove or something. And, and Shawn Michaels is the guy, you know, him, him and, and Super Sock. Uh, um, like, like that. I want to say it was like summer of '96, if I'm right, because that was that was like Stone, Stone Cold wins the the King of the Ring, you know, like right before, and then you know '97, like like that explodes. But that's also the same year, like like Bret Hart leaves. So I want to say it's like '96, if, if I'm mm -hmm. right there. Yeah, it was kind of funny, but because I mean, didn't Vader have like two runs in the WWE? Um, I know there was the one with like Jim Cornette, which was really good. Well, he was also managed. Well, I thought he was managed first by um, uh, Harley Race. That was in WCW. Now that run was fantastic. Okay, I thought he, you I know, thought like he Harley did. Race is like an awesome talker and awesome right. former world champ, and and then you know, he's got that raspy voice, right? And, and then you've got Vader in there, and just like, oh man, he's you know, hell's gonna break loose when these guys hit the ring, you know. Mm -hmm. But I mean, yeah, that that was like really the 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 best time to me for like Lex Luger was when Harley Race was the manager. True. You know, like, like Curtis Hughes was like the bodyguard, and it's like, damn man, these two big dudes, and you got this guy, the total package, you know. Mm -hmm. Back before he was like like a tweener when he came back at like the Mall of America, and oh god, it's Lex Luger. What's he doing here? It's yeah. crazy. It's <laughs> weird because like even like you know listening to Jim Cornette talk a little bit about um, Vader. Um, you know, I guess from his standpoint, you know, him and Vince just didn't really understand each other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you look at the Lex Luger kind of thing, you know, like Bischoff just didn't get Lex Luger either. So, yeah. you know, uh, it was lucky for, for Luger that Sting was such a big, you know, uh, proponent for Luger, you know, having her come in. But I don't know. We kind of see how that that's worked out. I hated that run because it was like, 
he's kind of a good guy, buddy of Sting, but he's also with the Dungeon of Doom with like Kevin Sullivan, and it was like you've got all these cartoon villains like you know John Tinta is the shark, and right. you got uh, King Curtis Iakea, you know the Sullivan. Nice, it, 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 and it was so funny. I saw him. On, I was looking at like Saturday Night's main event videos last week. And uh, I, I didn't realize like he managed uh, Kamala in, in WWF back in like the late eighties. I was like, Oh shit. It's the, it's the, you know, it will, I don't know. Was he called the taskmaster or, or, or what was he called? Cause he's always like father. It, 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 he's like <laughs> Sullivan. <laughs> and that dude was awesome though. You know, yeah, King Curtis Okeo, man, he was, yeah. he was the bomb. That's a, uh, that's, I, I heard that's where like Randy Savage kind of got some of his mannerisms from. Really? Wow, yeah. No l- l- like seeing stuff with like uh, Lanny Poffo talking about like, you know, w- l- like the mannerisms and the way he's like, oh, yeah. You know, it's like, oh. damn, that's pretty cool. You know, because I wouldn't associate those two dudes. They're like, I would never, polar yeah, opposites, totally you know? would never associate that. But you never know. I mean, yeah, people draw strange influences from certain people. Yeah. That but it's like the, the alliance one. against Hulk Hogan. And it's like, you know, here's pretty boy Lex Luger, you know, flexy Lexi with his, his, his just Adonis body. And then you've got these, these big dudes like Kamala and John Tenta. Right. Kevin Sullivan just with the painted on eyebrows. <laughs> just like, does it not make sense here whatsoever? <laughs> uh. Yeah. But then again, you know, like I said, I kind of look back on the whole Lex Luger thing. Not Lex Luger, excuse me. Um, Big Van Vader thing, because that's who we were talking about. Mm-hmm. And again, you know, he started off in the AWA as uh, Leon Baby Bullpower White. That was just kind of like, uh, I'm just glad that, you know, it's just so weird when you have these horrible gimmicks. I mean, granted, you know, and I, and I think if I remember correctly, like, he had kind of like a white tank top and like some, <laughs> like some weird, like stretchy red and white you know, like a like striped uh, Adidas looking um, pants, sweatpants or something like that. <laughs> it's the '80s, okay? Yeah, I mean, he looked like a really like bigger PN News. If you, if nice. you PN News. yo baby, yo baby, yo. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> I wonder whatever happened to that guy. But anyway, um, I mean, you know, Vader had a pretty interesting run. Obviously, he had a tumultuous relationship in the WWE. Found his groove a little bit more in the WCW. Um, and then kind of years kind of pass on. Um, and then, you know, if you remember a few years back, he had that whole feud with uh, Will Ospreay. Mm-hmm. Well, he and, had like a huge run in Japan, though, too. Like after, oh, after no, the WWE yeah. F run, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know if. Yeah. I mean, he kind of went back and forth in Japan. I think Vader was one of those guys that from what I understood, got to work with just about every promotion in Japan, mm-hmm. you know, kind of like w- the, the term that they use over there is freelancer, right? He did all Japan. He did new Japan. Um, I believe he did some Noah. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Um, I remember like, like when I had uh, an N64, right. They had like the, uh, the, the great, like WCW and then WWF games. And, and they had these, uh, these Japanese versions that you could import. I remember that they're basically based on like the all Japan roster, Yep, but they get around copyrights, and you could have like you, there's a Pride League, there was a uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling League. That's the yeah. only reason why I still have my N64 is because of that game it's called the uh, <laughs> Virtual Pro Wrestling Two. Uh, yep, that's what it is. <laughs> and that's why you I have your it. taunt, he'd be like Vader, and yeah. he'd put his hands over his head, you know. Yep. Yep. Just, like this is awesome. It's one of my favorite games of all times. <laughs> like I said, the only reason why I have it that AKI engine is is amazing. That, yeah, yeah, Aki was uh, amazing. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, you know, I, I enjoyed watching Vader in Japan. It was just, you know, again, strong style. People people liked, I liked it. I liked that hard-hitting kind of action. And, uh, you know, you, you could tell he was kind of laying it into people. Well, yeah, I mean, it's this, this tough guy mentality of just, like, you, you better lay it in because they're not going to show you any, any you know, like you know drawbacks or weakness or anything it's like you, you got to give as much as you get or, or you're gonna get run over right 100 you know? no, i don't 100%. think he got run over you know? yeah you know there might have been a few instances where people would no sell but you know he, he definitely you know gave it back to them and of course again because we mentioned that whole stan hansen incident with the eyeball um like i said i i did not see it till way after you know vader was done in japan um and i've always liked stan hansen again another guy that i enjoyed watching and you know kind of followed in the awa back in the day um and we'll definitely cover hansen another damn but yeah that match was just brutal 
<laughs> I mean, you know, he's Vader had some great matches too with, of course, Cactus Jack. That was another, you know, um, phenomenal series of matches those two guys had. But yeah, that that Vader match was just ah. There goes the eye, and then he pops it back in. And you know, for somebody that can't see, um, you know, they just they just kind of went in. And, you know, to Vader's credit, you, you if you've seen the um, Hall of Fame induction ceremony where Vader inducts Stan Hansen. Uh, you know, didn't seem like, you know, there was a lot of animosity about that. So they just kind of went on and picked it up. Yep. Two tough dudes, you know, fish out of water kind of overseas. Just <laughs> like, hey, man, you got to do what you got to do. Right. Yeah, I mean, there, there's the, the famous story about like him, you know, being in that, that match with Mick Foley. And it's like, well, you can either stay behind and get your ear sewed back on or, or you can go on to the next night and, and wrestle Vader for the championship. <laughs> and oh. It's like, oh, that's another good one. Right. Yeah. The whole Vader um, ear thing. Right. With uh, Mick Foley losing his ear in a match. I mean, it, it just like adds to the credibility of, of, of Mick Foley being a tough guy, you know, where it's just like, dude, this guy had, had part of his ear fall off and, and or, or tear off or rip off or whatever. But, 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 you know, it's like, he just kept going and it was just like, that's what they did. You know, it's WCW back in the day. Right. You know, I think it was in Germany. I want to say it was when, when that yep. story was from, from what I understand, it was Germany. Yeah. Again, I think somebody posted that match online. Um, we don't. I don't remember a hundred percent, but uh, yeah, I believe there's a point in the match where you can actually see him get tied up and then pull himself out of the ropes. Nice. Uh, yikes! It's amazing some of the, the old stuff you see online. Like I'm friends with uh, Gary Capetta on Facebook. Oh wow! And Gary Michael Capetta. He, yeah, Gary Michael Capetta. Oh. Um, and he posted a few days ago. Uh, basically, it's footage of him from I want to say it's July third, uh, nineteen ninety one or something. And he's announcing to this crowd that like Ric Flair has been stripped of the the world title mm -hmm. over uh, contract disputes. And, and you know, this is like I guess when he's going to like WWF back in the day. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh man, wouldn't you hate to be the guy to deliver that news? And you just hear the the fans booing. But somebody had a video camera in the the arena back then and this, when it was like, illegal right yeah 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 it's, it's doing total fan commentary of like oh the audience doesn't like that you know he's like it, he, he posts this on facebook and he's like the com the fan commentary on this is priceless man <laughs> it's one of those things you're like man you find this stuff like you know 20 plus years after the fact and it's just kind of funny to, to go back and watch it things that have happened Mm -hmm. But I know I kind of was prematurely brought it up, but you know that's that was the last big Vader news that I heard of was when he was, you know, getting into an online feud with uh, Will Osprey over the styles of things, and that that ended up leading to an interesting development where you know Vader was going to wrestle Osprey in the UK, mm -hmm. right, and uh, suppose he was going to do the job. But then things changed once Vader got there and was like, no, I'm not jobbing to you. Oh, uh, and, you know, Will Ospreay being the guy that he is, obviously, you know, a lot of people say, well, what the hell is he going to do is Vader? But, um, you know, he, he went along with it, did the job to Vader, and supposedly everything was good, but apparently not uh, do you remember any of this happening um i remember so i want to say this is coming out of like uh will Ospreay and ricochet's matches right correct like they had these like awesome matches in like new japan i, I think and, and and he starts getting on twitter and, and and they get into some beef and they're like well cool we'll turn this into a feud and get some money out of it right and it sounds like osprey does the job for the first match which is you know you, you let the 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 vet heel you know win the first one because the baby face has got to come back later and then there's no follow-up i mean this is <laughs> you know, it's like it's like hulk hogan and Shawn michaels it's like no nah, brother i'll get you on the next one right. <laughs> there's no follow-up there's no next one <laughs> which is another thing of, of, of like like going back and looking over the hogan you know wcw vader feuds like it's like man these really sucked because like you know there was one where, where it was supposed to be like uh i think vader and hogan in, in like a, a strap match and rick flair comes in dressed as a woman and and rick flair takes the pin so it's like vader's too stubborn to to, to do do the, the honors and and, and uh, yeah, Hogan is Hogan, <laughs> so it's just like <laughs> somebody's somebody's got to lay down, man. <laughs> That's not how this works. <laughs> you know? 
Uh, this is the reason why I always say Ric Flair is the best wrestler out there because <laughs> you know it's whether whether he wanted to or not, you know he just he's kind of did what he thought was best for the business or you know he's a good trooper. Although you know on the booking side of things, people have a difference of opinion on that, but yeah. I figure it's one of those things. Once you're over, you're over. I mean, it's like like if, if Brian Danielson never wins another WWE, uh, you know, match again, he's still the WrestleMania 30 guy with the visual of, of the crowd just going bananas. Yeah. And, and it's like that dude's over. Like, like he doesn't need to. Like you. Like I want him to be like the guy. Him or him or Joe. Those are my two guys right now. Um, but but it's like, does he need it? Like, eh. I think I think for fans, fans need it. You know, what I mean, fans, you know, the whole thing about <clears throat> old school pro wrestling is that it's about the good guys versus bad guys. And, you know, it's always about the good guys trying to overcome adversity, you know, with the new school of wrestling, that may be a little bit different. But I think it always comes down to that. Yeah. I think people want to see that, that title chase, win. you know, or yeah. we got to see our guy get, get the, the win at the end. Right. Yeah. Right. Other than that, then what's the point, right? <laughs> Anyone but Roman. Yeah, anyone but Roman. <laughs> uh, we'll see about that. <laughs> we'll save that for Raw. <laughs> right. We'll, we'll save that for whatever Raw is. I don't. Monday I don't Night know. Roman. Monday Night Roman. I like that. They should have done that instead of Rollins. Uh, That's right. Rollins. <laughs> all Roman all the time. All right. Well, let's uh, let's kind of jump. Uh, you know, again, uh, rest in peace to uh, Big Van Vader. Uh, thanks for all the great matches and uh, memories in the world of wrestling. Where, where does he rank as far as big men for you? Wow. Um, I would say that's a great question. I would say like, I would put him in the top five. Easily, easily. Yeah, and, and I wouldn't put him in number one because like, no, I'm going to go Brody for number one. Mm. But, but I, I think of Yokozuna also is maybe my. Oh name. my gosh! And it's just like, other than that, though, I can't think of anybody else I'd put for number three o- over Vader. It's like, man, I just like he was just fun to watch it. And I mean, like, when's the last time you saw a guy that size do a do a uh, moonsault? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it's one of these things of like, what? What did I just see? Like, really? That's awesome. You know. I mean, you know, Kane is kind of up there for big men as well too. You know, just for the longevity. And I think Luke Harper could definitely be up there for. You know, um, I mean, because he's got that Brody esque look and style and quality. Mm-hmm. Plus, he can wrestle like a cruiserweight if they wanted, if you wanted to. That's I'm hoping for. Um, like, well, not I'm, I'm not hoping for a Rowan injury, but you know, God forbid he find like something he's more passionate about than pro wrestling. And uh, you know, Luke Harper just has to be a solo guy. Then right. push him to the moon. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So, so like, I guess Undertaker would definitely be in that conversation. And a bit, I like, I love Big Show. Like to me, like him and Mark Henry are kind of like the unsung heroes of, of WWE. Oh, but like it's yep. like they'll just just put anybody over because it's like, yep. dude, I'm seven feet tall. I'm, a, you know, I can't fake being a giant. You know. Well, especially the the shape that he got into. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, obviously Braun Strowman's going to be in that conversation, but still, I mean, you know, I'd like to see Big Show get another at least another decent run. Just because of the shape that guy's gotten into. Yeah, I hate the the Shaq uh, WrestleMania match didn't go through. Not that I was uh, in a hurry to see that, but it's like with the amount of work that guy put in, yeah. like like I feel like he deserves that that WrestleMania paycheck at least one more time. Yeah, you know. You know, here's the thing. I would. And I'm gonna get some heat for this, but I would actually put Bam Bam Bigelow above Big oh, Van Vader. Bam Bam's a good choice too. Yeah. Oh man. There's a there's a guy that was really like. Unsung, yeah, you know. and that's one. That, like, did you ever see his uh, ECW run? Oh hell yeah! I mean, it was just like I mean the, crap, the, the WWE Bam Bam Bigelow because this yeah. was like after uh, Ma- Major Pain, right? Yep. You know, you're like it's been a few years since you've seen Bam Bam, 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 Bam Bigelow, and then he comes in as part of the Triple Threat. Yep, and he's like throwing Spike Dudley into the audience. You're just like, oh my gosh, man, this guy. <laughs> screw you for forgetting about him. Like, you know, right. he, he's here to throw down. That's so. what I hated. I was like, you know, the WWE run. Like, I remember that whole instance where, like, all the managers were saying, like, I've yes. got this new guy. And yes. He's the best. And he does cartwheels. <laughs> and his name is Bam Bam Bigelow. And you're like, okay, all of these managers want Bam Bam Bigelow, you know? Yeah. So <laughs> I thought it was a great kind of story. Like, Slick was after him. It's like, oh, man. Slick's Fuji, after him. Like, Heenan, everybody yeah. was after him. And then all of a sudden it was like, you know, we forgot about him. And then, you know, here's where, like, you know, as a kid, you know, I – like my philosophy as a kid was that 
<laughs> in my brain, like Southern wrestling was real because like, who the heck would bleed like that? You know, obviously <laughs> who would, I mean, blading was something that I would never think of, but you know, apparently in the day, that's what it was. And, you know, growing up in Hawaii, there's a lot of guys that look like a lot of Southern wrestlers, you know, just kind of dad bods that yeah. can really kick ass. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, and then when I started watching WWE, it was like, okay, you know, this is more like, um, not, I don't want to say rehearse, but it's more like, like sparring. It was to me, my, as a kid, like, you know, doing a little bit of martial arts, it was kind of like, oh, okay, this is like when they practice, like what we call Randori and, you know, they're, they're doing it, but they're not really hurting each other because, you know, the matches were like so spot on, like it starts and it ends in like five minutes or, you know, it's like 10 minutes and it's always, you know, it was very conclusive where like Southern wrestling, sometimes like all hell would break loose and you get like, you know, disqualifications and people would throw chairs in the rings. Like, they're like, there's no way this can be, I mean, in my, in my child brain, there was like no way this could be fake. So I always thought that like Southern wrestling was like the minor leagues and everybody wanted to get to the WWE to get the big paycheck. And so, you know, obviously they got to protect the talent, they can protect the guys, because if these guys are wrestling all, all week, you know, there's no way, you know, your body is going to hold up for that. But, you know, it kind of confirmed my suspicions when, you know, uh, Bim, Big Bam, uh, Bam, Big Bam, Bam Bam Bigelow had to put, uh, what's his name? Uh, LT? Lawrence oh, yeah, Taylor. yeah, yeah, Lawrence Taylor. That guy was so blown up in that match, and I was like, oh, my God. I mean, you had all those guys trying to carry Do you remember, the like, the, the gimmick after that where he came out, and he's, like, the fiery Bam Bam Bigelow, and he yep. had, like, the little, mm -hmm. like, flamethrowers? Yep. It was so bad. It was it's so like, bad, but, I mean, I mean, you, I, I, you know, you have to watch that Lawrence Taylor match with Bam Bam Bigelow just to see how talented a guy like Bam Bam Bigelow is. I mean, there's, I don't think anybody else could have carried Lawrence Taylor the way that uh, Bam Bam Bigelow did. Yeah. At the time, at the time, I don't think anybody could have been like, <laughs> everybody's like, holy crap, this guy is like, I got to, you know, it's kind of like the whole Roddy Piper, Mr. T kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. But there's no way, uh, you know, again, there's just, I gave Bam Bam a lot of credit, but then what happened to him after that? There wasn't anything, right? I mean, mm -hmm. so, so he did like the, the, the plasticky fiery gimmick. It, it's kind of like the Ricky Steamboat gimmick, right? Like where he came out with like the headdress and the wings and the, Long, it was just yes. like, no, nah, man, he was just like a badass athlete before. Like he doesn't need, you know, you to lower the lights so he can like spit some alcohol into right. the flame or into that bullshit. It's like yep. this guy is over. He's a legit tough guy for having a flame tattoo on his head uh, <laughs> and, and, and do a cartwheel yeah. three hundred plus pounds. You know, uh, <laughs> speaking of Steamboat, you know, he just he just recovered from hip surgery. So you know, best of luck to Ricky Steamboat. Oh, but yeah, I mean, you know, Bam Bam Bigelow was one of those guys that, you know, really didn't need to have that gimmick, you know, and I, and when he became a face, uh, you know, wrestling with uh, Sir Oliver Humperdinck as his manager, uh, I thought that was, that was incredible, but. <laughs> I remember yeah, that they brought him in like on the Hogan Survivor Series team. Right. You know, where it's just like him and like I think Kim Patera and like maybe it was Hacksaw and, and Demolition, you know, and they were a baby face. And it was just like, oh my gosh, all these, these big beef, beef boys that are just, you know, ready to kick some ass yep versus like the heenan family and it's like haku and and and, and andre and, and <laughs> like the powers of pain the powers of pain <laughs> the road warriors rip off yep. yeah he's got like the the antlers and the and the, the the animal fur and you're just like what is up with this guy <laughs> he's a hunter yeah. and then the other guy has like the little staff with the w and you're just like and, the, and the, like the little phantom mask and you're just like oh dude no not, no. not so much they had their gimmicks but you know what I liked about, you know, what I liked about Bam Bam's run. I didn't intend this to be a, a Bam Bam conversation. You know, another guy who passed away before his time. Um, but you know, you mentioned his ECW run, mm -hmm. and yeah, I totally forgot about him after the whole Lawrence Taylor thing. And then to see him, as you mentioned, doing all these things, that that really reminded me of like what a great talent Bam Bam Bigelow is or was. And um, yeah, again, just kind of going back to the conversation. Well, they, they treated him would, serious, you know? Yeah, they totally it was like did. he was the muscle. You know, Shane Douglas was like the mouthpiece champion guy. Chris Candido was like the technician in the ring. The shit stirrer, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah totally. The, the chicken shit heel. And, and then you've got Bam Bam coming out to like Guns N' Roses, Welcome to the Jungle. And you're yeah. just like, oh man you better scatter like like you know when brody's coming out in japan it's just kind of like oh boy be ready to move because because you know remember the, the, like the match between him and taz 
where, where they they go through the ring. Yeah. The, the entryway floor part? Yeah. Well, yeah, they did both of those. Yeah. So I guess one, one was maybe not so planned, but, you know, it's wrestling, so it's probably all planned. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and, and then they do the one on the entrance way, and it's just, it's totally Joey Styles. Oh, my God, you yeah. know. It's just amazing. Uh, no, definitely. Bam Bam Bigelow, I, I thought, uh, you know, really made Taz look like a million dollars as well. Yeah. And that's, that's, you know, that's credit to Taz. I mean, that's credit to Bam Bam. I mean, you know, again, um, yeah. Big, uh, best big man out there. I would definitely put Bam Bam Bigelow in that race. Um, and then, you know, below that big, big Van Vader. And again, like I said, I'm sure some people will be, you know, upset by that. But hey, it's my opinion. You know, like it, it doesn't <laughs> really matter. Um, let's move on to uh, the other sad passing. Uh, Matt Capitelli. I did get to hear a little bit of Jim Cornette's, um, uh, I guess, thoughts on it. And. You know, I I don't know if you ever watched that season of Tough Enough where him. Yeah, that, that was one of the seasons that, that actually did watch. That was yeah. was that was that uh, like MTV still or or USA? I, I, it was I before believe... it like went like online. You know how how oh, what yeah, eventually totally. became NXT. Yeah, no, yeah I believe like it was a, on was, MTV. John Morrison, right? That was that season. Yep, both of them actually won. So yeah. both of them actually won uh, contracts, and then you know, um, Nidia. Um, mm-hmm. And Matthews was on that season, right? Uh, I think that's right. I want to say it's either season two or maybe season three, because I think Josh Matthews was on maybe season one. Yeah, I might have that wrong because I remember uh, like Nidia got a contract. Nidia got a contract. Like, there was two like, girls: was so Nidia and the and the other girl. Um, gosh, I can't remember her name off the top of my head now. Is it Linda Linda Miles? Um, what or was her name? She she ended up becoming uh, married to. Um, uh, Charlie Haas. Oh no, um, Jack, Jacqueline, Jack, Jackie, Jackie. Yeah, Miss, yeah. Miss. No, not Miss Jackie, but not Miss Jackie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Jackie Gata. Jackie Gata. Yes. Jackie Gata Haas. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me just double check my references. Obviously, <laughs> tough enough. Season three, but I was, I was actually like, wow, you know, because I like both of them. I remember. <laughs> You know, with uh, with John Morrison, John Johnny Nitro, whatever you want to call him, <laughs> Johnny um, Blaze, Johnny Blaze, Johnny <laughs> Blaze is the best. They should have kept the Johnny Nitro is awesome. But um, you know, when they had him do the tryout, and um, you know, he said, you know, he's a break dancer, and Jim Ross goes like, "Well, can you do a spin a Rooney?" And he was all like, "A what?" And then Jim Ross is like. You're a wrestling fan. You don't even know what it is, what a what a spin rooney is. You call yourself a wrestling fan, and he does one anyway. I was just like, <laughs> damn. I remember that, like John Hennigan was like a uh, big like gymnast, wasn't he? Parkour. Okay, right? but I just remember yeah. seeing pictures of him like on one of those. What are they called? A horse? You know, like they have in the Olympics. Uh huh. And, and it was just like, man, this dude's got like wicked upper body strength. Like, oh, I mean, the know? guy, the guy is. I mean, you know. The guy, the guy has a look, the feel, everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, Matt Capitelli, you know, he has a heart. He's definitely somebody that um, could, uh, you know, if he was given the chance to platform. I mean, as a baby face, you know, he would, he would definitely knock the socks off of people. Um, that, that's one of the things I noticed. Like, like uh, I saw a post with like some of the Twitter responses to his passing, yeah, and and not not a bad word about the guy. Period. I mean, it's just like universally loved. Yep. And it's just like, man, we just kind of missed the boat on this guy. But like everybody loved that dude. So he's very very positive and just let, like a joy to be around. Yeah, I know it's it's sad because there's so much potential in that in that guy, and you know, again with. Um, with Cornette kind of using him in OVW at the time. I mean, he definitely saw the potential this guy had it again, um, had nothing but nice things to say about, about him and um, the potential that, that, that guy could have had, had he not been diagnosed with, with, uh, with brain cancer. Mm-hmm. Was it, was he a former OVW champion at one point? Yep. Damn. Man. Um, you know, and again, if you if you watch that, um, we all remember that instance where <laughs> Hardcore Holly, yep, decided to 
smart him up to the business. <laughs> that, that that's one of the people I didn't see weigh in on on, on Twitter. Like, like I, I didn't go looking for, wow, for all Twitter, wow. but like, like I mean, the the very last one was like the Miz, and you're just like, oh man, the Miz is like one of the, one of the best heels, you know, still wrestling, and, and, and you know, he's talking about how they were supposed to be called up together as a yep. tag team, right? And I just think, like, man, how 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 much differently could that have gone, you know, if if that had happened? Yep. Um, but yeah, I just I don't know. You never know how stuff's gonna work out, but yeah. It's very yeah, sad. It's it's pretty sad. All right. I'm looking here. Who was in the cast? For Tough Enough Season 3. Was, uh oh, Melina in that cast? Is that where she met uh, Hennigan? Yeah, or well, she tried out for it, but she didn't make it. Okay. Um. Because I feel like that might have been the last one before they kind of went uh, like online or to MTV or something. They had, let's see. So season three was Chad, Eric, Jamie Burke, Jill, John Hennigan, mm -hmm. um, Jonah. I remember yeah. Jonah. I, I actually met that guy like an indie show in Alabama. Uh-huh. Oh. And, and <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't want to speak ill of anybody. They just seemed kind of like, okay, right on. Like Not a good guy? Just seemed kind of like a, a meathead. Just kind of, I mean, uh, you know, it could have been a bad night or something, but you know, so, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So I've, I've definitely got everything mixed up. So tough enough three, yeah, was uh, John and Matt, and then tough enough season two was Jackie Gata. Matt Morgan was on there. Oh, cool. So, that's that's another guy where I'm just like, man. That that's I feel like there's money left on the table with Matt Morgan. Well, I actually got to work with Matt Morgan. I mean, he actually worked for a promotion that, that we had. So he a cool dude or not so yeah. cool. Yeah, dude, he was such a chain smoker. I was so surprised. Wow. That like that guy smoked a lot of just cigarettes, you know, it was just mm -hmm. like always had a cigarette in his hand. I was just like, wow, I can't believe that um that a guy that looks like him, moves like him, smokes so much. But yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was just that was my um, my impression. But I remember like seeing him on TNA, thinking like, "Oh, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna do something with this guy. This is like a missed WWE opportunity, and they're gonna write this wrong and and, and push this guy." I mean, granted, you know, American Gladiators is pretty comical, but it's like I'll forgive that because like this guy could move. Again, you know, that reminds me of Josh Barnett, where he's just like. Big looking. Uh, looking Josh Barnett dude. should sign with the WWE. Uh, he's Please. a free agent. He's a free agent now. Does he's not with the with the UFC? But I want to correct myself too. Yeah, I don't know why I was thinking our favorite broadcaster Josh Matthews was in the same <laughs> season, but now he was in season one. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. Sorry, folks. I know I should do uh, uh, a little bit more due diligence before we do these shows. But hey, you know, we like to do things off the cuff and on the fly. So you know, sometimes you just have to be right. quick. And you know, if it wasn't for um, the internet here, I would sound really stupid, but that's okay. I'm, I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Matt Capitelli, um, you know, again, uh, great guy. Again, um, definitely one of those guys. I remember the news came out where he had to relinquish the OVW championship. And, um, you know, you can find that on YouTube. It was a, it was a pretty um, heart-wrenching thing. You know, I, 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 was, I was never there. Uh, never, never got to see a little bit of OV, uh, OVW live, but um, you know, from what I understand, a lot of people really were into OVW. You know, they really follow those guys. Um, you know, they were very passionate about those the wrestlers that were there. You know, like with John Cena, Brock Lesnar, Randy Orton, uh, Leviathan. Class of two thousand two. <laughs> you know, they were they were all behind those guys, and you know, when they had you know guys like Jeter and Shelton Benjamin is another one. Well, Benjamin and Haas, you know, yeah, definitely, you know. Those... Was he was he he was what he was like tag team partners of Randy Orton at one point, right? I'm not sure. I want to say that was the thing because I remember them them wrestling on SmackDown recently, and you know, plug plug push up Benjamin, uh, please. <laughs> yeah, like there's still a guest left in that guy's tank. I, I still believe he, he could have a run. You know, it's like if Jeff Cardi gets a gets a run after all he's done, like I think Shelton Benjamin could 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 go. You know. No, definitely. But I mean, with Matt Capitelli, uh, you know, again, such a young age to pass away. Um, just sad because, again, there's a lot of unlocked potential that, that's there. Uh, but, you know, again, he was definitely one of those guys that I was happy 
that won tough enough. I would have been happy if if John Morrison won it as well. But the fact that both of them were were named winners, um, you know, good on good on those guys. And uh, you know, from what I understand, he Matt will leave a lasting impression on a lot of people. And if rumors serve correct, and I hope these are the, this this does come true and it comes to fruition, is that um, it looks. There were, there's rumors that uh, Matt may be um, nominated for Warrior of the Year next year. So that would be really cool. Yeah, uh, it would have been great if it was during his his time here on this planet. But um, hey, you know, hopefully it will give some well deserved attention to him and uh, his family because you know he leaves behind a widow mm-hmm. and uh, I believe some ch- and I believe a child. But um, yeah, that's pretty sad. So, yeah, kind of piggybacking on that, I'm hoping Vader will, will maybe be this year's posthumous entry. I mean, that that, that bums me out because I mean, the Stan Hansen one was what like two years ago, right? Right. If they would have the chance to to do right by him last year while he's still alive. I guess it's like there's still eh. something going on. You know, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, promote any. Un, unsubstantiated rumors, but apparently there was some issues with it. So hmm. I don't know. You know, it would probably be either him or, or maybe China. You know, it would be like uh, CM Punk. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Who knows what's going to happen? I mean, you know, never say never in this world of wrestling. But you know, CM Punk is going to be. One of those things. With that, and, and, and I've heard rumors that uh, maybe Ray Mysterio goes in this year. You know, with him being yeah. uh, the unlockable uh, pre-order uh, 2K19 character, or one of two. I guess the other one is rumored to be Ronda Rousey. Wow! But um, it's one of those where it's just like, like I, I've I've heard that maybe they sign him to like a three-year deal, and, and you know, maybe it's just sparingly so New Japan can't use him. Right. Well, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I know he was in California when I saw New Japan Strong Style Evolve. Yep. But he's not going to be for New Japan this weekend when they, they have their show at the Cow Palace. I want to jump back on Matt and just make sure. I thought he had a child, but it looks like he does it. I thought he did for some reason. I was thinking that too. But, I think I'd, I'd read that as well. Yeah. 30, I'll, I'll have to, again, do a little bit more due diligence on that. Well, with that being said, again, best to families of vader and matt capitelli as we move on to this week in wrestling all right this week raw smackdown uh kind of gearing up to the extreme rules pay-per-view that's happening one week from this sunday thoughts on this week's wwe shows let's start off with raw Dave? <laughs> pass. pass yeah that was, raw was pretty tough i mean i'll, I'll I'll uh, yeah, I'll admit it myself. Um, you know, the whole highlight of the evening was Braun Strowman throwing Kevin Owens off the stage from a porta potty. He's uh he's like the new Teddy Bowl man, right? He, he's blue. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I I yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, it's it's again. I'm, I'm trying to think of any any great highlights. I mean, I wasn't really impressed with anything or anything that kind of drove me to be like, I really want to watch the Extreme Rules pay per view. You know, um, as far as to see some type of culmination of the match. I mean, obviously, you know, they have our favorite Baron Corbin um, wrestling Finn Balor and. You know, again, I don't. Uh, I uh, I just don't know. It's like I I don't really think they need. I mean, it's great that Corbin has the opportunity to 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 showcase himself. You know, and you know, Finn's dig at Corbin being fired from TGI Fridays. You know, I guess. It's, I don't know. I I just don't. I mean, I love Finn Balor. I like watching him. Um, this whole this whole setup with him and and Corbin, it just it, it doesn't really get me excited at all. Mm-mm. I don't you know? think that's a, that's a good TV match. I mean, I wouldn't want to watch that as like the top of hour three here. You know, it, right. it is a you know final match, final segment on a Monday Night Raw. Yeah, 
It, it's tough. I mean, I will, you know, like, oh, well, what do you want to see better wrestle Kevin Owens or Seth Rollins? Yeah. I mean, that's a match that I definitely want to see because it's a, those two, you know, have a very entertaining match. I'd like to see, I mean, I, uh, this would probably be viewed as a demotion, I, I know, but like, uh, if you could put Finn Balor on 205 Live, you know, put, put yeah, him it's, and it's Hideo Tommy mixing it up, and it's just like, hey, nobody believes <laughs> you guys. Shut all these people down and prove them wrong. Right? Just, just burn the house down. You know, we talked a little bit about this last week as far as what, you know, maybe SmackDown being a better show, which it is, mm-hmm. um, because of the whole Fox deal. I mean, if the Fox could get 205 live and show that. Um, especially with, and again, I didn't get a chance to catch all of 205 Live this week, but I did see highlights and spots. I mean, I think that's the kind of show that people could get behind, mm-hmm. you know, especially with action. I mean, again, you know, Fox, Fox, whether it depends on how you want to look at it, either lost or did not follow through with the deal for the UFC. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sorry, I mean, I'm an MMA fan as well, but. I think, you know, my, my prediction is that the WWE being on Fox will do much better uh, numbers than the UFC did on Fox. Oh, that's, that's just, that's just my, my bold prediction. Um, and if you had a, if you had a product like 205 live that kind of has that um, realistic feel to it, um, I think people would get behind it. I think it would definitely be a huge show, you know, versus watching just, Again, horribly scripted stories, mm-hmm. uh, bad, just bad, bad, bad comebacks. And you know, I need an apology. I want you to apologize. <laughs> and, uh, we starting to sound like like this, and, and maybe it's like a slow hill turn. Maybe question mark. I but, don't know. but it's just kind of like complaining. Like, how am I supposed to get behind this guy? He just whines and complains, and then never wins. You know, I mean, it's like they're they're effectively like you know doing him a disservice because it's like he complains and complains and complains, and then he never wins the belt, and, and it's just like, what, why is this guy on my TV? Why is he in two matches? And he won both of them. They're like the the revival gets a DQ loss. Oh, who are we talking <laughs> about here? Uh, Roman Reigns. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay. You know, because it's like, like about... Roman's complain, complain, complain. It's oh, yeah. just like, ugh. right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think. I think they do a disservice if they try to do a superstar shakeup right before the Fox deal. Oh, big and all, time. And all of a sudden, you know, you're losing the guys that people want to watch, like Samoa Joe, mm-hmm. um, you know, Daniel Bryan, you know, The Miz, and everything else that to matter. I mean, that being said, okay, I mean, again, didn't really care what happened on Raw. Um, uh, <sighs> I don't know this whole booking with Bobby Lashley. It's just if they're trying to make Roman look like the sympathetic character, uh, they're totally failing because I sided 100% with Bobby Lashley. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a guy that's you know I love the fact that they're just pushing like oh you know Roman has his pride. Roman has his pride. It's called a tag team match, all right. And here's a guy that wants to work. And you know again you know he's standing there. Bobby's like tag me in. Let me do this because you know last week you couldn't get the job done. And you know, there's Roman going like, "Well, I'll show you. I'm just gonna stand over here and look at you." You know, like, he did tell still you know. win. <laughs> I mean, it's like, would it kill them to give this guy a loss? I mean, right. like, just story wise, sense wise, it's just like, uh, I don't know. There's no logic. There's I mean, no it's logic. wrestling, but like, there's no, there's no psychology to this. It's like, what is this building towards? You know, where are we going with this? Well, it's a Lashley Roman feud, but again, like I said, I don't, I don't sympathize with roman at all i'm 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 definitely behind bobby because mm-hmm. you know again you know, roman comes like you said like a whiny selfish brat at this point and if that's what they were going for congratulations you did it <laughs> but i have i have no i have no vested interest in seeing roman win the title Mm-mm. i'd rather see bobby lashley win the title at this yeah, point totally totally so i don't know other than that you know we've got the raw women's championship storyline um again we talked a little bit about nia jacks being the new big show is she a heel is she a face do i care and the big answer is no uh, everybody's waiting for ronda rousey to come back <laughs> um you know just that last promo that they keep on showing with you know ronda exiting the building after getting uh suspended uh you know basically saying you know i'm gonna kick you know the pink ass the, the girl's 
pink haired ass. I mean, you know, just that line alone was enough to basically say, like, I'm waiting for Ronda Rousey to come back. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a holding pattern. But oh. uh, she's got a ticket to Extreme Rules, though. So she does. And I mean, that's the thing. <laughs> what a tease. <laughs> what a tease, you know? Um, but it, it works because I'm looking forward. I mean, and that's the problem, right? It's like, I don't really care about. Um, I don't really care about this match with Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss. I just care to see like what is Ronda Rousey gonna do. So you know, congratulations again. You know, the focus is off the champions. I, I just not, I'm not a big fan of Alexa Bliss on a wrestling capacity. You mm-hmm. know, obviously she's got good heel heat. She's the type of person that is again one of those that makes me want to purchase my ticket to see her get her butt kicked by somebody. You well, know? the same thing with Carmella. Uh, like, uh, there's not we'll get we'll, we'll get to Carmela and okay. Oscar when we talk about <laughs> SmackDown, but yeah, that's that's a that's a little bit of a different conundrum for me. But you know, um, going back to the Raw Women's uh, Division, you know, uh, hey, at least they can run a couple of storylines instead of just having everything be focused on the uh, Women's Championship. So speaking of that, we had the return of a. Uh, the infamous Dr. Shelby, right? <laughs> That's and, right. Uh, anger Welcome management. <laughs> right? Anger man. Oh my God. You know, talk about horrible writing. I, I don't know. <laughs> you, you didn't enjoy uh, honesty theater or uh, uh, the, the, the friend zone. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, there's instances where I wanted to like things. And I was just like, you know, I'm not, I'm not a 15 year old girl right now. Okay. Uh, and I don't know if I should say that, but it's just uh, it's just so bad. Well, yeah, my notes are on this is this sucks in all caps and this is awful. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh I mean here's terrible. the thing. <laughs> I feel like I have a right to say it because you know, when you watch their dynamics in NXT, there wasn't a lot of like stage segments. There, there doesn't, I, I, you know, again, there doesn't have to be. You know, no, you know, don't have to be at all. I think Corey Corey Graves does a great job of it, basically painting Sasha Banks as a backstabber and basically, you know, like congratulating Bailey for finally growing up. You know, understanding it. So there's there's a lot to be said about you know Corey pushing that 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 push help pushing that storyline along for people that have not seen them. But if this is going to build up to another match between them that will rival that of TakeOver, I'm all for it. But at the same time, I'm just kind of like... Do you, do you think they're they're booking this for SummerSlam in Brooklyn and depending on that Brooklyn audience to save their butts? I, 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 they need to. I think they I need mean, to. is that like, we can just kind of, you know, ha- have weak storylines because we're going into Chicago for the next show and the audience there will, will save us. You know, it's like they, we're, they're basically on cruise control as far as the, the, the writing goes. It's like, well, they'll just put on a good match and the audience will forgive them because, you know, they're a good audience for wrestling. I don't know, you know, because on the one hand, it's like, what what's going on? Because if Finn Balor is making money um, for the company with his merchandise, I would assume Bailey is because look at all the little girls that are wearing her gear. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, Sasha too with the uh, what do you call them? The the legit boss. Uh, I mean, don't like they sell those? They do, but I mean, I see a lot of girls wearing the the wristbands. You know, basically, you know, doing all the the hugging things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one of the uh, first NXT shirts. Well, the only NXT shirt that I have right now was purchased by my wife because she got me a, can I get a hug shirt? So, <laughs> you know, so, you know, she saw a guy that the, the one time I went to San Diego comic-con, this is a uh, two years ago. Uh, there, there was a dude, I took a picture of it, it had a, a purple, I'm a hugger shirt. And I was right. like, Dude, can I get? I, mean, I got a picture of him. There's a Bullet Club shirt, you know, a no. Kitty Mega cleaner shirt, and you know, so it's like, and even I had wrestling merch on. I, oh I yeah, I mean, picture. I mean, the the number of people that have wrestling merch on right now is just is is incredible, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't know. You would think that, hey, you know, we're sitting on a gold mine with somebody like Bailey, <laughs> but you know, apparently not. And again, I don't know how well uh, Alexa Bliss's merch is doing. I'd be I'd be interested to see that. But I mean, I know she's got a little Miss Bliss shirts, and so people are pretty big into that. I wonder if they they do like those like a uh, kind of skeletal Freddy Krueger type glove. Or well, she doesn't so much do that anymore, I guess. No. But you know that that was a thing for a minute. Yeah, and NXT. Yep, the whole Freddy Krueger gear. <laughs> little uh, Miss Bliss. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I don't know. Raw was just kind of one of those things where it's again, I wasn't. 
invested into the product at all. Um, you know, again, God bless Kevin Steen. Um, you know, he's making he's making this feud with Braun. Again, I don't understand why they're feuding anyway. Um, because it seemed like, you know, uh, it almost seems like Braun is kind of bullying Kevin. Yes, he's totally the heel in this feud, right? This, I mean, I, I've heard this compared to. Uh, do you remember when the New Age Outlaws uh, pushed Terry Funk yeah. or, or or Chainsaw Charlie and Cactus Jack off of the 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 the, the raw uh, stage in the dumpster? Right, and it was just like, oh my god, you know that they've they've killed these two people. That this is essentially the same thing, right? It's like stupid human tricks because Braun takes ten minutes to bring him from the back. But but you know is this is this punishment for getting on 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 the interwebs with Shania Twain? Is this like <laughs> you went outside the company and got you know internet hits without our approval? So now you're going to be like the blue toilet guy right. next week. I, I have no idea what's going on. You know it's like come on. I mean yeah. I mean I think Kevin owns his money. Um, he's got a he's definitely got that. He's got that big fight feel if they if they allow them to do it. I'm just trying to figure this out. I mean, because it's like, here's a guy that was feuding with Shane, right? Here's a guy that's feuding with, who was feuding with Daniel Bryan and, you know, second universal champion handed to him by triple H, obviously. Well, this makes me long for the days of ECW where, where I think like, man, if Paul Hammond was booking this guy, he, he would be like the, the, the meanest you know, heel champ in, in, in wrestling. Or just, I mean, dirtiest, you know, if he, yeah. if he has to cheat to win or anything like that, like there's nothing, there's nothing, you know, so at Extreme Rules, like if Kevin doesn't get a win, I'm just going to like, all right, well, this is kind of like a weird match, you know. Like, well, you know what I, I almost wish they would do is, is, okay, so you have, you know, Brock Lesnar shows up like whenever, that's like the gimmick of like, uh, you know, he's never around. But but like in the UFC, if if they're months at a time without a, 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 a championship match, they do an interim title, right? And it's like maybe Braun is the guy on TV, or maybe Roman is the guy on TV, or you know whatever. But it, it it's just one of those things. And you can do the 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 Brock Lesnar match where he comes back and it's like one guy's got a belt and the other guy has a belt, and you know it's going to be a unification match or something where where it's you know if you want to treat it like it's real competition. You know, but it's just like, man, this is this is all such a holding pattern though for SummerSlam, All right? You know, and then that'll be a holding pattern until the the Rumble in January. You know, so they, they kind of fall lull, you know, for wrestling. I don't know, man. Well, let's get off of Raw because I was just really kind of <laughs> like, what the heck am I doing watching this right now? Let's get on to the better show. Let's talk a little bit about what's happening with SmackDown Live. Um, let's start off since you kind of uh, kind of jumped to Carmella. Um, you know, I was not a big fan of that whole match with her and Oscar because uh, for the money in the bank. Mm -hmm. I just thought that I don't know what it is. It's like it's the same thing that happened with um, Emma, where it was like it was a very kind of like competitive match, and it's like, well, you're training Oscar to be this badass, and you know, here there's a, there's like a number of times where. You know, I'm like, why isn't Carmella selling this move? Why isn't Car Carmella selling that? And then this week we get James Ellsworth. And I was like, this is how that match should have gone at Money in the Bank. You know what I mean? Where, like, Carmella was afraid, getting her ass kicked, you know, being that chicken shit heel. Yeah. I mean, it's not. I'm not trying to put down the fact that, you know, Carmella can't be a capable wrestler. But it's like one of those things where it's like, here you're trying to, you know, make this, uh, or you're trying to make Asuka look like this, um I don't know, force of nature kind of thing. This, mm -hmm. this intimidating, and, and all of a sudden it's like, okay, well, she's kind of, you know, Carmel is holding her own. I mean, you know, she got a cheap victory over, over Charlotte, um, when she first got the title with the help of the Iconics, mm -hmm. and then you know their next match was a little bit more competitive, but it was almost kind of like a fluke that she got the title because you know Charlotte kind of hurt her leg. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden she's having this like competitive match and you know not selling anything to Oscar and Money in the Bank. I'm like, what's going on? So when James Ellsworth comes in. I was like, wow, you know that's that's great. I like that match because again, I think this will help her at least initially. You know, through like the the next you know we'll, we'll through this feud, we'll see, but, we'll but, see, but, right? But it's like, like I don't think Ellsworth is going to be a hindrance. Like it, if anything, it's going to benefit her. But like this week they have a double count out. 
Right. And it's just like, this is just pissing away time until they have a rematch next week, which is the, the go home show for, for extreme rules. Right. And it's like, you know, if they have their head out of their butt, they'll, they'll have Oscar go over. But, but at this point it's like, will they? I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my, that's my, like, uh, yeah, that's my concerns. Like, are they, what's going on here? Because, you know, if they don't, if they don't want, I don't know. I don't know what they want, but uh, it's just. And, and and my next question is, what's next? So, say she beats Asuka, uh, which which I I wholeheartedly think they'll do, because it's like, well, I like this person, so obviously they're not going to get a push. Yes, you know, that's my, right. my my own personal logic. It's like I'm a huge Asuka fan, so well, so she's here's the thing, push. right? Because she can't speak English well, she can't cut a promo. Whereas Carmella can, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, damn wrestling, you know, they just want, and, and that's what, you know, happens with Alexa Bliss. As you asked me, like, what do I think? Yeah. You yeah. know, here's the thing. They, they got them because they can cut a promo. Now, a lot of people on, on certain sites want to say, well, she slept her way to the top. You know, if you're a publicly traded company, that's one thing you don't want to have happen. Right. Is, <laughs> is, 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 is basically, any type of rumors where you know there's sexual misconduct happening between the talent and and the you know executive of a of a publicly traded company you know mm -hmm. so i'm i'm just going to say no but you know <laughs> does she have a look sure you know people, oh, yeah, people people are are attracted to her um can she cut a good promo sure um you know is she the most technically sound person in the ring no not by a long shot but What's what's when you have to 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 go four to six weeks between the next big show or big match, mm -hmm. and it's like you is can she only... selling? Is she selling matches though? I mean, do I really want to see her wrestle? Well, I mean, no, we just no, want to see her get her ass kicked by Ronda Rousey, yeah. but that's about it. But but yeah, it, it's it's I feel like Carmella looks great. She she's great on the stick, but uh, you know I I, I want to see somebody who can wrestle. Right. Well, like uh, my favorite match from WrestleMania this year was Asuka and, and Charlotte Flair. Mm -hmm. Even though Asuka didn't get the win, it was just like that was still a fun match. Right. You know? That was that was a weird match too, as far as like the how that match ended and how you know that she got the pin. So I don't know. It was it's, it's kind of weird how I, I'm glad they built it up, but then the the payoff was just wasn't there for me. Mm -mm. You know, I, I don't. I don't have a problem with with Charlotte winning. It's just the way that it's it's, it's with how she won. I was just kind of like, oh, okay. Well, that's weird. But hey, it's WWE booking. What can you do? <laughs> you know, if we all yeah. if we all like their booking, you know, there'd be nothing to say. But <clears throat> then again, it would be called NXT Takeover at this point, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> I, you know, I feel bad for criticizing it, but then again, when then you have a product like NXT, which you know, I'm sorry, it's it's for the wrestling fan. I I could care less about you know these horrible promos and stories. Um, you know, again, just like with ECW, a lot of storytelling was done in the ring. I mean, I still remember one of my favorites from ECW on TNN uh -huh. was when you know Tajiri was going to get up against the network. And you know, Tajiri couldn't cut a promo. I mean, he he could in Japanese. I mean, I always loved it when he started cursing in Japanese and Spanish. Well, that's, 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 that's my favorite. The, that's the thing with Oscar, when she gets like so frustrated, she starts just going off. Yeah, like I don't know what she's saying, but she's really. I mean, she conveys. It'd be awesome just to have like you know a, a a manager for her that was a voice piece, and she just goes off and have somebody just like say something totally opposite. Well, she's very concerned at this time about your well-being, you know, or something at that <laughs> point. But. You know, is the, there a Gary Hart to her Muda? Right, exactly. <laughs> you know why? Why not? And then you know, having like I don't know, getting back to the Tajiri story. You know, um, Callus is is kind of confronting him. I think it was Callus and um, it's Carino and all these guys, and you know, basically. <laughs> Callus is saying that, or the Jackal saying that, you know, there's nobody to kind of help you out, and out of nowhere, Tajiri pulls out a can of beer. And pops the top, and then all of a sudden, Sandman's music hits. And it's like this is fucking brilliant. This is amazing. You know, it's like here's a, here comes a beer signal, and then you know here comes Sandman, and you know Sandman comes out to help Tajiri. I was like, yeah. you know, yeah, it was it was it was it was creative booking, but I was just like, jeez. I mean, those are the kind of things that are still in my mind. You know, whereas you know now in SmackDown we've got Team Hell No reunited, mm -hmm. and. Um, 
All of a sudden now, Daniel Bryan is like from, you know, nice, easygoing guy who likes to wrestle to like, oh, I need anger management again because, I mean, you know, I get where he was going. He's like, when have you always supported me? But, you know, like on Talking Smack, we we got to see his little sarcastic personality. Here it's kind of he's regressed into that. And I get it. It's for storyline purposes. Well, it's one of those things like on. once you see him on, on 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 Talking Smack, you can't unsee him on Talking Smack. Right. Like that's out there. That's like WWE canon. And you're just like, yeah, but it was better when you guys did it like this. Right. And now it's like this this kind of G-rated version. But uh, like they had the Bludgeon Brothers come out at the very end of the show, and nothing yep. happens. Right. Like it's like, well, you know, how anticlimactic. This even had the Usos out. come out and you know refer to them as sweet beats again. You know, oh, like, come on. The best. Like I was hoping there was going to be like like they would be in the main event with. Uh, that's with, see, and that's the one thing that I. I really loved about SmackDown Live is like, oh, now we're going to throw the Usos again, you know, because we have nothing to do with the Usos. Well, they had such so good chemistry on Talking Smack, you know, they, they were always like, like kind of making like, him like laugh. But, the, you know, the, the fact that I thought it was a given that this is now going to be a three way match and it wasn't, I was like, okay, thank you. You know, thank you for uh, actually swerving me. I, I thought that uh, I thought you guys were going to have them work in. That's not to say that, you know, between now and, and the extreme rules happens that it couldn't happen. It's mm -hmm. just that that night I was just really shocked and, and surprised that they did not, um, you know, uh, add them to the mix. So good on WWE booking, whoever, whoever decided that. Thank you. Yep. Let's see. Uh, had a Shinsuke Nakamura promo this, this week, but he's, I guess they're going to keep him out of the ring until the actual show is right. what I've heard. Good. I like, I like Shinsuke Nakamura. I hope he makes a big impact. Um, uh, don't want to see him as, I want to see him as a champion, but you know, yes. again, it kind of sucks that you know he left New Japan as their intercontinental champion, only to come to WWE and become their intercontinental champion. You know? <laughs> He's like like the, the opposite of Chris Jericho, right? <laughs> uh, Taking it across the pond. Well, you know, if Nakamura decides to go back, I mean, you know, that guy's money. Um, you know, people, you know, Japanese fans still still hold a still hold him in high regard, which was which was nice to see. Uh, when WWE did their thing in Japan, what did but, you think about the uh, the New Day pancake eating contest? You know what? You know what? SmackDown <laughs> really, really lacked. I think SmackDown really lacked a, a, a lot of Samoa Joe. Yes, but, yes. Um, but yeah, I mean the pancake eating contest. I don't know what they're doing with Sanity. I really don't know. I mean, I don't know what they're doing with Sanity. I don't know on Raw what they're doing with the Authors of Pain. Um, that was that was cut out of the the Hulu uh, portion this week as well. The pancake eating contest? No, the uh, the the authors of pain. Uh, I don't know what's going on with along that. with my boy Elias. Where it's like they cut out Elias. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Elias's money. Um, he got done for Doctor Shelby. <laughs> bro, man. Elias's money. He's a. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we, so we've talked what, about it for Elias. What do you think? Uh, so with them keeping Joe off TV, do you think this is going to play into like some kind of uh, like out of nowhere Joe entrance into the AJ uh, match with Rusev, setting up for like SummerSlam? I don't know. I'm just like, why the hell are they keeping Joe off TV? Like unless he's injured, but you know, there's been no leaks. Of well, I mean, you know, it's 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 kind of like what they they've kept up other people for because they have nothing for them. I mean, look at Cesaro and Sheamus. I mean, they they've been off the TV for a while. And it was like, they are wow. the bar. Uh, they're at the bar. I mean, they've got, the nothing, they got nothing else to do. So that's right. Yeah, I'm I'm disappointed. I don't I don't know what to. I don't know what else to say. You know. Um, I mean, regardless, though, it's still a good show. I mean, they're still focusing a lot on um, the women's matches. But, you know, I can't remember. Was there even Sonya Deville this week? Um, No. Uh, Becky Lynch had a win over Peyton Royce. Yeah, I'm glad the Iconics are getting some time. I like them as heels. Like I said, you know, the Mean Girls. A kinda, serious serious yeah. promo for, for them uh, yeah. on SmackDown this week. There was a good uh, women's match on NXT. Which one was that? Uh, it's Dakota Kai uh, oh, yeah. versus uh, Santana Garrett. Yeah, what's going on with that? Well, I mean, before we get on NXT, Garrett, hashtag. <laughs> yeah, I mean, before we get on NXT, is there anything else that, that can? I mean, uh, oh yes, we can't forget about the Rusev um, AJ Styles match, right? Uh, 
we could forget about that. Um, <laughs> well, it was actually eight in English, but well, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. AJ and, and English had a match, and then uh, there's a beat down by Brother yep. Rusev after, right? But, um, but yeah, I just I don't know. I, I I feel like so much is in a holding pattern. Right. But like, like I don't want to say, hey, skip this show, but but you know, I, you know, <laughs> it feels I, like I if you don't I see think... extreme rules, like if you have to work or you have to be at a, a you know, a I wonder if they just something like kind of phoned it in for the Fourth of July, um, you know, being on a weekday. Maybe that's what happened, but it just didn't seem like it was, uh, as you said, anything to write home about. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I, okay. I do like as silly as the the day segment was. I do like them feuding. With, I think that's going to work out well. You, with, you like uh, them feuding with who? Uh, sanity. The new day, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. So it's gonna be a three on three kind of yeah. three baby faces or three heels like the, that. You know, will be maybe at least one show worth. You know, mm -hmm. they, they let uh, Killian Dane get in there and just run wild. But I mean, just think of him and Big E. Like that could be fun. You know, you get the two big hosses in for for you know a, a, a six man trios match that, that that could work. Yeah, good. I don't know, Dave. I don't know. I'm just not. I'm just not excited by it. You know what I mean? I just kind of mm -hmm. like. It's it's there and that's okay. Like if you had like Jim Ross calling that, it'd be like, "My God, these two big behemoths!" You know, like, like <laughs> it, it it really it really like the commentary plays such a, a big part in, in the show too. Yeah, yeah, you know. without a doubt. But again, you know, I'm just not excited about it. Um, you know, until until something major. Or dramatic happens to kind of to kind of sway that, you know. I just you know, I just continue to hold my breath. But <laughs> and I'm not trying to put on it. I mean, again, we have better shows to kind of look at, and so we'll get into that right now. Oh, yeah. um, you had mentioned uh, NXT, so NXT again this week. Um, yeah, some fantastic show, some fantastic um, matches and storylines against Santana Garrett. Uh, what's up with Santana Garrett, man? I wonder if it's on her. Like, I have to think they would have offered her a deal at some point, as much as she works for them. And I wonder if she's just like doing indie shows and, and happy living the indie life, or, or you know, getting the occasional TV exposure. I don't know. You know, the the funny thing is that um, uh, rumors is that Mark Cuban has now purchase interest in women of wrestling wow which Ooh. santana garrett is a part of so mm -hmm. you know i don't know if they're gonna actually do anything with her or you know again with the may young classic coming up if you know they're just priming her to be ready for the may young classic um yeah that was one of my, my big picks last year for the may young classic was you know santana garrett amongst you know I, I don't know what it is about santana but obviously they're not a big I don't, i'm not i shouldn't say they're not a big fan of her but it just seems like well you know they're not really into pushing her i i don't know there's so there's some great women in there it could be something that you know obviously we're not privy to um again not to just jump into the may young classic but We have Io Shirai coming in. You know, I, I would be definitely, definitely be surprised if Santana Garrett is not um, a part of that. Um, that's, that's, I'm wondering yeah. if it's one of those things where it's like we haven't seen Serena Deeb. I don't think since since that last year. I don't know if she's. Well, I think she's done. She's done. From what I understand. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, she's, she's working for them like a training capacity. Correct. Or? Yeah, from what I understand, that's what she's doing now. Which is weird. I mean, I liked Serena. It was just weird because, you know, it's it like you get a little bit fault. of a storyline, but you know, yeah. that's it. I mean, it's a good story, right? Exactly. Yeah. And it, it, that that sh it would have been great if they could have picked up some momentum with her. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's kind of like a uh, Brian Kendrick in the the Cruiserweight Classic, right? You know, it's like, oh, it's the it's the God, you know, that you're, was like you're too old for this tournament, but, but you know, it's like the 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 comeback story. Well, you and then you know when he loses and Daniel Bryan comes in and they share a hug, I was like, come oh, on, yeah. you guys, yeah, ah, uh, don't give me all these feels now. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Um. So so other stuff I liked in NXT. Uh, There's a Bianca Belair promo that I thought was was pretty good from the poolside. Yeah, yeah, she's on her honeymoon, and it was just like, oh. She she's she's putting everybody on blast, man. She she's uh -huh. you're on notice, so so I I, I I I'm warming up more to her, you know. Um, and then there was a, a two on one. <laughs> I'm not a fan of the the mighty 
formerly T- TMZ. What? Are what? you becoming like Rod right now? Come on. Well, I, I'm a, a good buddy Rod I'm, I'm, who's I'm, on I'm, our I'm, older <laughs> program was not a big fan of TM61, <laughs> also formerly known as the Mighty Don't Kneel. And now they're just known as the Mighty. Uh, come on, man. Shane Thorne, Nick Miller. What's why? Why? I'm, I'm, okay, I'm a day. big I'm a big fan of uh, Big Otis Dosovich. Not so much as his partner, but, but this guy something something about him is. is just, you don't like Tucky? Come on, man. Tucky's <laughs> Tucky's a glue, man. Come on. Man. <laughs> it's it's steaks and weights. Steaks and weights, brother. <laughs> Banging and clang. I, mean, I don't. This guy, I'm like, give this guy an action figure. I'll go buy that. Oh <laughs> yeah, just totally. This, this short, stocky, like he he looks like a like Ram Man from Master. Right. Ah. <laughs> He'd be good man. <laughs> like he has like no neck. He's just all just like thick and stocky. He's, and he's uh, just like grinning from ear to ear like he's having a good time. Ah, techie. Yep. Uh, no, I mean, I think that's kind of what they need to do right now uh, with Dose of it. Oh, Heavy Machinery. I was trying to remember their name for a second. Um, you know, put them in a situation. You know, they need some good heel tag teams because, you know, is it. Phew, is the undefeated, uh, the undefeated, uh, undefeated, undisputed area? Are they really heels? But not from the audience standpoint. Right? Exactly. Over like yeah. Rover, man. Right? It's it's hard. I mean, <laughs> especially in Chicago and the UK. Right? Uh, <laughs> I'm cold. I, I, anywhere, anywhere. It seems like they are they are not heels at all whatsoever. So you know they've got to do something with them. While we're on the subject of them, what would you think if they added another member? Uh, I don't want to be opposed to that. Why not? What, what, if, what if Chris Dijak uh, joined that stable? I think it'd be good. I think, I, good I, I think that would work too. You know, but that's it though. The NWO needs to cap it at like four or five guys, not like, know. you know, Hollywood. Hey, and as I Black said, I, you know, I wasn't a big fan of Chris Dijak in his ROH days. I don't know what it was. It's just like one of those things like, eh. And, you know, not, a, was not a big fan of Adam Cole um, in his ROH days as well as his days um, in, in New Japan. Mm-hmm. But you know the way he's being booked now. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan. I mean, I was all I was a big fan of um, Red Dragon. You know, yeah, Riley I'm still and Fish. Guys, yeah, um, and that's why I think like I feel like like because you know he used to team with um, uh, Cole used to teach team with uh, you know Kyle O'Reilly is is Future Shock. You know, and I think it's just like well you're kind of overshadowed by this guy. You know, Kyle O'Reilly might not be the best talker, but that guy is just. A delight to watch oh yeah i mean oh, it's yeah. fantastic to watch strong style it's like he's just knocking the shit out of these guys but uh yeah die had a really good match uh with velveteen dream this week i thought yeah well yeah um he's getting a little bit more offense so it's like cool cool, cool getting a little bit more personality but you know the dream still had to go over right <laughs> well i'm glad the dream you know yeah i mean on the big matches the dream's been kind of falling short of the stick but Oh, well, they did a, a tease also this week. Um, so, so kind of a callback to the uh, UK tournament night two, um, with, with him walking out on EC3. So EC3 kind of interrupted his, his celebration over Dijak. So I'm wondering if maybe that's a program coming up for uh, NXT Brooklyn in August. Oh yeah, totally. I I, I would definitely um, agree to say that. I could see that happening. And maybe that's the, the turning point for, for dream becoming like a baby face kind of, I don't know. I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's going to be something like what, what do they do with dream? Is he a baby face? Is he a heel? Um, you know, where do they go with this, the storyline? I mean, I like, I think dream needs to stay a heel. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I think he needs to stay down in NXT for at least another year. But I mean, cause you have like, like, well, just look at it as like, there's poor booking. Once you graduate to the main roster, Horrible we, we have like one, one good year left of, you know, we could give this guy a baby face run in NXT and maybe he's the champ coming out of WrestleMania 2019. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. I, I would like to see it, but <sighs> we've been let down before. Haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other match that was on NXT this week was uh, Johnny Gargano uh, going over uh, EC3. That was mm-hmm. kind of like he's becoming like the person that he hates, you know, doing similar moves that Tommaso Ciampa's doing. And, and I'm just like, I'm not really feeling Johnny wrestling at this point. You know, it's so they're like Roman where I'm like, okay, I get it. You're the pushed guy. You know, you need some time to simmer down because because you didn't win at the, the last big show. Right. So it's like you should cool off for a little bit. But um, next week, they're going to have uh, Danny Burch and Adam Cole. Uh, Undisputed Era is going to have a rematch with Mustache Mountain. And uh, Kyrie Sane is going to have a match with Vanessa Bourne. 
So that that sounds like that would be a pretty good show. Yep. Uh, we kind of know where a lot of these matches are going to go. So, you know, if you haven't read the spoilers or, you know, <laughs> don't know, but yeah, we kind of have an idea of what they're trying to plan. And, you know, like you said, this, this may lead to the next one. But let's talk about the women's division. Um, you know, Shayna Baszler, um, still on fire. Uh-huh. Um, still there, still their women's champion, des- deservedly so, I think. Um, I don't think I don't think she gets a lot of credit, um, because I think she does well as a. I think her wrestling is pretty good. You know, is it is it is it one hundred percent there? Um, you know, everybody can use improvement, but I, I think Shayna is, uh, you know, where she needs to be right now. I think she's definitely got her promo uh, character down. Like she's easily unlikable. It, it, as far as just you know, running off at the mouth like "prove me wrong," like right. step up, you know, you're the you're the captain of team kick kick me. Right. And it's like, oh man, she's, you know, it, it's kind of like Kevin Owens where she's she's shit talking during the match, right? You know, which I like. You know, as a heel, I think that's a, that's effective, right? You know, so who's the next viable? I mean, I don't know if you read the spoilers for NXT, uh, but you know, we're not we're just gonna kind of ignore that. Uh, but ba- do, do, do they have somebody planned for the uh, the women's side? Um, from what I understand, yeah, I believe they did. But um, you know, we can always ignore that and kind of look at who do you think is going to be the next person. Okay, I haven't read the spoilers. Yep. Um, if you have to stay this side of the the pool, I would say Bianca Belair because she's kind of a beast, but she might need like another another you know cycle or two. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, I'd honestly go with Tony Storm. Oh. That women's match for from night two of the UK tournament was fantastic, and, and that's something I'd like to see on TV more than like we'll just hang out till we get the UK NXT up. It's like well that might be months, you know that might be eight months from now. Like put her right. on NXT U- US TV, you know. Um, but I, well, I don't know. I mean, because they they've kind of left things hanging with Dakota Kai, uh-huh. so and, and, and then Kyrie is is, is, is I, I don't feel like. like She's where she needs to be. Like, like to me, that's your your WrestleMania um, babyface win. You know, like I think they could could build her up for a few more months. Uh-huh. But I mean, they've always got the the rematch of the uh, the the May Young Classic too. Right. We would say like, hey, these two were in the finals together. And now they're you know wrestling for the NXT Women's Championship. So I don't know, yeah. but, but I like that though. Where there's there's a few few coals in the fire, so to speak. Definitely, you know, you, it's not really um, there yet as far as like where where they're deciding to move everything. And again, I think the women's championship match is um, is intriguing because you have a lot of a lot of potential there. Like you said, Bianca Belair is there. Um, you know, who knows, Lacey? Um, sorry, Candice Candice LeRae. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Candice well. has, has hardly even started, you know, as yeah. far as the, the women's side of the house. I mean, she's just been like arm candy for for Johnny Wrestling right. so far, you know. So, you know, we can definitely see where that's where that's going to go. Um, but yeah, you know, hopefully they do something with Kyrie um, because she did win the Mayan Classic uh, again. Listen, if Io Shirai wins and they, you know, you know, twice in a row it's a Japanese woman that's won, I would have no problem with that. Um, because I think I think fans that have not seen Io Shirai wrestle uh, will be in for a big surprise, big treat. Um, as far as a lot of people, they kind of rank her above Asuka as far as wrestling Ooh. capabilities concerned. Okay. You know, that's um, you know, just to see if <laughs> again, I, I just wanted to see a match with with uh, Kyrie and Asuka, and then I'd love to see a match with Asuka and Kyrie, and then. Um, I'm sorry, Oscar, Kaidi, and then maybe Kaidi and Io, or Io, and then Io, should I, and um, and Oscar sometime. Um, any of those combinations would be would be an eye opener for a lot of wrestling fans. And again, um, Oscar's not really capturing everybody with her promo style. It's just her. It's just her in ring capabilities, right? Again, well, I, I, I just I feel like you you don't you don't have to have that for everybody, right? I mean, it's, a, it's she. She can be like a silent killer. I mean, it's, it's the same thing with Joe. Joe cuts amazing promos, but you don't need him to cut amazing promos. Joe is like visually stunning and just goes out there and kills people. And it's right. just like, oh, Andy can also cut like a, a badass son of a bitch kind of you know promo. It, 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 you know, because but it's like it's the in ring that backs it up. Right. You no. Know? Exactly. It's the in ring that backs it up. 
you know, same thing with Kevin Owens, same thing with, you know, unfortunately, Sami Zayn, who's going to be out for forever. At this R.I.P. Point. Sami Zayn. We'll oh, see you man. in 2019, I hope. Not All right. Oh, <laughs> you know, see that's, a, I wish, I wish they would have said something about Sami being out. Did they mention anything about him being out? I haven't seen anything on TV uh, about him being out. It's, it's all to, third sheets where it's just like this poor guy. It's you know? butt, both rotator cuffs. It's like, yeah. God. And if they did it to where there was like, um, you know, oh, hey, guess what? You know, Bobby Lashley did this or something. You know, if they worked us a little bit on it. Yeah. I yeah, yeah. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fault them for that. Well, but. that's the thing is they, they could have, I mean, it's the same thing with Barry and Corbin's hair. They right. could have used this in a storyline to, 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 to give somebody else another rub on the way out. Right. You know? Hair, well, yeah. Like Braun could have like murdered him into like the eighth row or something, you know. <laughs> Just like throw him off the stage. I don't know. know. You know, apparently they like Corbin, so hey. I mean, you know, you see all these guys that like shouldn't. Uh, I don't know. Again, I've been, been listening to many of Cornet's podcasts where he talks <laughs> about, you know, like how the WWE ruins certain wrestlers, and you know, he talks about like here's all these guys, you know, like Jeter. That you know drove from San Diego to, to come and train to be a professional wrestler, living his dream. This guy can work, you know. Uh, Rico Constantino, you know, a guy that he's pushed for. Um, these guys can work, but nope, they call up all the dumb, you know, guys that can't wrestle up mm-hmm. and expect like, hey, why isn't this guy any working, you know? So you know, in in some cases, whether you agree with Jim Cornette and his old school style of of, of wrestling, uh, what wrestling is or not, I mean, you know, hey, has, uh, has got a valid point on something. Uh, said anything about uh, Enzo or Cass? Um, you know, he did make a comment on Enzo's rap. Um, I have not listened to it, um, <laughs> just because I'm not a, you know, I just don't really care about Enzo More. Mm-hmm. Um. Just think about those guys when I see the the pop figure two pack at Walgreens. Oh man! <laughs> like they're both gone. It's like, is this a collector's item or probably not so much? We'll see. You know, we'll see what happens. I mean, it's like a Walgreens exclusive. <laughs> it's like the wacky hair guy and the tall guy. Will they be back? I, I wouldn't be surprised if they do come back. Honestly, it could be like a WrestleMania surprise, like the Hardys. You know that that music hits and everybody's like. Bum, 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 bum. Whoop, 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 you know? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I want to see how they how well they do the indie scene. Um, did not get a chance to listen to Enzo on the, the Steve Austin podcast, but oh well. Uh, I will definitely, t- I'll definitely just try to make some time to listen to it to see what's what's going on. But as of, as of yet, I've kind of I've kind of passed on it. Um, well, some of the know. stuff like I heard about that interview, and I haven't listened to it either. I might do that this week. Um, it's talking about how, uh, you know, like big guys like Austin and, and Brock Lesnar all had agents, and and Enzo got an agent, and, and it's this kind of thing of, of, you know, they always push this idea of like if you don't want to main event WrestleMania, what are you even doing here? Right. And, and it's like if you're just here to hang out with the guys on the road, you know, what the hell? I mean, I'm not want to call out like Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel, but it's like, come on, guys, you know, you've been in this company how long, and you're still just the, you know, or like the fashion police, right? I mean, you remember how how how, how good, uh, you know, um, th- those guys were, and, mm-hmm. and, and it's just like they just, you know, I'm going through the motions, I'm getting my weekly paycheck, and, and it's like, well, maybe he's got an ego, but maybe you're supposed to have an ego if you're the the top guy. Right. You know, maybe that's how you keep your spot, you know, or or get you know noticed. Like, hey, but but I I, I don't know. It's it's one of those things. I know he's like a like a very polarizing figure. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think before the show, you and I were talking about the Simon Gotch um, interview, uh, former Vaude villain, and uh, yeah, nothing but not nice things to say about Enzo. <laughs> yeah, and kind of explained his. Uh, you know how Enzo thinks and works. So you know, like I said, there's, 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 you know, his side, there's her side, and then there's the truth, right? Yeah. So yeah. Who, who knows at this point? I'm, I'm not sure. Um, yeah. But I don't, I don't know. know. It kind of, kind of makes me wonder though. Like if Steve Austin's a fan of the guy, maybe he's doing something right. You know. And yeah. He's yeah well, here's the of, thing. Like, you know, these promos. It's just like yeah. he saw something on him too. Maybe so. I, you never i don't know you know it's it's kind of like um i don't know if you you follow a lot of the podcasting but um 
like I've been a big fan of Vampiro. I've always mm-hmm. liked the way he looks. I like the way, you know, he how he was in ECW, but <laughs> uh, not, not ECW, sorry, WCW. But if you listen- like on the old like WCW Live, like Iata, like a uh, uh, was it like Real Player? That's what it was. <laughs> you know, following uh, Nitro and before Nitro. No. But uh, if you're a fan of the Chris Jericho network, and uh, you know, um, and you're you're familiar with the history of him and Conan, uh, you know Jericho and uh, and Conan do not have anything positive to say about Vampiro, and um, you know he's Vampiro's done a couple of stints on the Steve Austin podcast, so you know really. Oh yeah, I'd like to go listen to those. Yeah, that was a, it. Was a pretty interesting interview. You know, there's there's a couple of things that. Um, you know, again, um, people want to want to compare a lot of things to like Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant and all that stuff like that. But apparently, you know, that's how popular Conan and uh, Vampire were in Mexico. Mm-hmm. You know, and for a guy from Canada, you know, to just kind of come down and all of a sudden be this kind of like heartthrob that you know sold out, you know, arenas and stadiums in Mexico uh, with this feud and things like that. Um, yeah. You know, it's interesting, but if you listen to what Chris Jericho has to say, which is not much about Vampiro, <laughs> um, you know, and, and I always look to like, I always look to like, you know, Storm. Did, did he call him a fuck face? That's, that's what I would know. I'm sure he would now. Um, <laughs> let's just say he kind of came like, out at Dominion kind of looking like Vampiro with the well, black lipstick and the. That the, was actually an homage to uh, Dr. Luther. Mm-hmm. Um if you're kind of familiar with the old wrestling days, Dr. Luther, uh, Dr. Luther, you know, him, Callis, you know, and of course, Lance Storm, they all kind of like came up together. So, you know, and of course, you know, another Canadian that, uh, that I guess can't, we can't mention anymore. Uh, Chris Benoit, you know, those are like the guys that, uh, they're going to talk about somebody who is from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. <laughs> Well, that's Lance Storm, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, well, you know, and it's weird. I, I, you know, I haven't heard, and I have to go look for it. You know, I, I want to get, uh, you know, Lance always seems like the even keeled kind of guy. You know, like he, he's like the one. Like when when Lance Storm started going off on Disco Inferno, <laughs> and you know, basically <laughs> Callus was the one that was, you know, kind of. I don't want to say instigating it, but you know, he was the kind of one that was perpetuating this feud, uh-huh. you know, Disco Inferno, for those of you who don't know, um, he is like the co-host for Conan's podcast, also part of the Jericho network, um, keeping it 100. And he's always in a feud with, uh, Don Callis. Um, if you get a chance to listen to Lance Storm's podcast with Callis, uh, Killing the Town, they even get t- <laughs> so weird. They even get Disco Inferno to admit that his poor bookings and storylines is what led to East, uh, WCW going bankrupt. So <laughs> it's just kind of like one of those things where you're like, what the heck is going on? But yeah, I mean, there's there's a point where like you could tell Lance Storm was getting heated when he was talking to. Um, Disco Inferno, and, and the funny thing was like Disco's never had anything bad, particularly to say about Storm. He's always had this feud with uh, with the Jackal Don Callis, so it was just kind of interesting to hear. And I was just like, wow, this is this is compelling podcasting. You know, whether it's a work or a shoot, I find it very entertaining. But you know, getting back to the point, uh, Jericho not a fan of Vampiro, um, <laughs> but Vampiro did appear on the Chris uh, on the Steve Austin podcast. And so, you know, it makes me wonder again, you know, the validity of what Enzo's saying. If a lot of people are going to question the stories that Vampiro has shared on um, on the Steve Austin podcast, so he, that's kind of my I've long heard way. Some interviews with him where, where it sounds like he's got some whopper of a fishtail. For, yeah, for, I mean, it's like really Vampiro. Did it really go down like that? That's what you know, Jericho kind of uh, insinuated as well. Is like there's a lot of stuff. But again, you know, it's, it's his side of the story, and that's kind of why I thought it was a good comparison to bring up Vampiro and, and Enzo Mori because uh-huh. so there's, there's you know, his side, their side, and the truth somewhere in between. And, you know, sure, I'm sure there is some validity, but there's also some other extenuating circumstances. For example, like with Simon Gotch, there's a story that he kind of tells about Enzo bragging about Enzo screaming 
uh, at these girls. <laughs> and like, show your tits. And they're like, show your dick. And I guess apparently he goes and sleeps with these two girls. And so that's the story. But then apparently these are these, there are some pretty heavy set girls that lived in his apartment that stank. So I don't know, you know, that's, that's Simon Gotch's version of the story in a nutshell. So like I said, there's, I, I, I'm just thinking of like, what if like Enzo and Cass or, or real, real one, number one in Cass uh, showed up in Lucha underground. Well, like, like, <laughs> well, this is, this would be tough. Cause like you said, like last in the last week's episode, you were mentioning that, you know, Cass has been in developmental since 2011. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, like with some people, you know, this might be like the break for them and just be like, I'm just going to find, I'm just going to do something else. You know, I'm sick of wrestling, you know, whatever. Um, you know, or, everybody's Drew McIntyre. <laughs> or, you know, yeah, you know, he might, he might actually go, I don't, you know, like as much as Cass, you know, is big and all this stuff like that. I just, I just didn't really feel anything from him. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like. Well, it's the same thing with uh, guys like Ryback and uh, Jack Swagger. Yeah. You know, where it's just like, and I, and I guess Jack Swagger is going to do Bellator. Correct. He's uh, yeah, you signed for MMA. Yep. But but it's just it's one of those things where it's just like I hope it works out for him. You know, I don't see yeah. anybody like going to retirement. I mean, it's like I'd love to see Adam Rose let, like pop up somewhere and do. Oh, it. Adam Rose is a sad story too. But, I know. But, yeah. but it's just one of these things of just like some guys let, like are like fuck you. I'm going to prove you wrong. Like Drew McIntyre or or Chris Hero. Mm-hmm. You know, before he came back as as Cassius Ono again. Um, but, but a lot of these guys, it's just kind of like, I just do indies and, you know, two dates a month here and there. Right. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, am I, I'm not excited to see these guys. And I think we spent a little bit more time than necessary speaking about Enzo and Cass. Uh, <laughs> was I a big fan of them? Sure. I mean, I'll admit it. But you know, as time kind of wore on, it's like, you know, you just get so sick of it. And you, know, you just so, get so sick. I just, I'm just disappointed that we never get the payoff from 205 to see like Rich Swan uh, beating Enzo Amore. You know what I mean? We, we didn't get that at all. We only got, um, you know, here's some abrupt ending that happened to Enzo. Nobody knows what happened. We're just going to carry on. So I'm just well, I, I, I think too of uh, like Neville. Like, yeah. was he, he, didn't he leave over some kind of frustration with how that show had gone? You know, sure. how, like they decided to go with like Enzo instead of him or something like that. Well, I think too is also uh, money. I don't know if you. I listened to what. I don't know. You know, it's so weird with Austin Aries. You know, um, mm-hmm. how well, he I, I left. That, that match was like left off the DVD. Of Correct. Course. Yeah. And so there's a lot of money, and then you know, there's I forget which which like it, was it Ride Along or something, uh, or there's some program that I remember where. They're, they're driving and they stop Neville and Neville's driving like this, you know, million dollar sports car or something like that. So, <laughs> so yeah, if somebody's concerned about money, you know, definitely I could see where that, where that's coming from. So, you know, who knows, who knows? I, I would love to see these guys come back, you know, two Oh five live. We'll kind of move on to that. That was a pretty spectacular show. Uh, again, I didn't get a chance to, to watch all of it, but you know, from the clips and everything that was happening, it's pretty spectacular, right? Yeah, uh, so with that one, uh, there's a really quick uh, Noam Dar match where he basically, like, knees TJP in the face, and that's that. Um, and then Akira Tozawa has kind of a, a squash match, but they lead into a a, a promo with uh, Leo Rush. So mm-hmm. it looks like they're they're going to possibly feud, which that'd be cool. I, I love Tozawa, and, and I haven't seen enough from Rush to say, you know, he's bad or good. But uh, Mustafa Ali and, and Buddy Murphy killed it. I mean, this is probably, gosh, if I had to say, at least 24 minutes. I mean, just all over the place in a no DQ match. And this is kind of like the rubber match between these two that they they each had a win over one another. But um, who ended up winning that one? Uh, Mustafa Ali. Nice. I mean, good for Buddy. I mean, you know, kind of, you know, had his had his stint in the in the tag team uh, division for a little bit, and then. Uh, kind of went nowhere and now you know he's he's doing something so mm-hmm. kudos to him on that that's the thing like i wish that there would be maybe two or three more guys like, like along with you know leo rush coming in you know just uh may- maybe give me like oni lurkin um well he's out well, well yeah yeah he, he's out but i mean it's like, like i've seen him on there before but uh yeah i think there's maybe a handful of guys and, and again i would maybe inject like a like a baller or, or, or somebody on there because because I don't think he's what north of two hundred five is he is he kind of like a smaller guy like, I forget I think they they 
I'm trying to remember what they build him at on, on the last show, you know, like, but apparently, you know, he, he was a lot heavier than, not a lot, but he was a little bit more heavier than 205. Maybe they okay. said like 210 or something like that. I, I thought they said like Daniel Bryan was like 215 or something this mm-hmm. week. Yeah, yeah, but, um, but but uh, I think next week they're gonna have like Cedric uh, Alexander and um, Hideo Tommy for, for I want to say for the title. So that's one of those. It's like man, yeah, they've only got so many more months of Kenta being contracted. So it's like I want to get see some awesome matches out of this guy right. before he goes back because I, I I don't think he's gonna stick around. Yeah, really. I, I feel like yeah, I think I, it, I think know. I think they probably renegotiated his contract once they did this whole deal with Noah. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe. I, I would love to see like an influx of, of people from Noah or some kind of talent exchange. Right. Like that, that would be awesome. I mean, it's like Seamus and Cesaro. It's basically like you're not doing anything with them. Give them to Japan for six, six months. Right. I mean, you know, you've got like uh, Lance Lance Archer and David Boy Smith over there. Um, you know, it's like you got some, some fresh blood, you know, uh, North American guys coming in. And, and, you know, you could maybe switch those guys out or something. Do something with them. Yeah, yeah. No, hundred you know, percent. Fresh, fresh in the the pot. I agree. All right, what else we got going on in the wrestling world? Let's talk a little bit about All In. Unless there's anything else in the WWE universe you wanted to, to kind That's, of hit. Um, nope. Um, other than that, really, uh, I just saw that uh, they're going to do a, a Tommaso Ciampa, Alistair Black. Uh, match for the nxt title the next set of nxt tapings in, in a few weeks nice but um that, that'll kind of like let you know where they're going for brooklyn right so i'm still hoping it's it's a like a like a three stages of hell match or something for for champa and gargano but but you know they might do gargano uh and i don't, I, I don't know Ch- champa and black maybe yeah. I, would, I think it'd be cool if he took the belt off of black and then gargano beats him maybe Huh. But I think these guys are on borrowed time. Like I don't, I don't see them still being on on NXT in six months. Right. Like I think they're they're going to get kicked up to the, the main roster. Well, they might be good for two hundred five live. You know. You know the thing about it is if if SmackDown well when SmackDown goes to Fox is it going to be a three hour show? Do we know? Um. No. That that's that's that they have said not yet. Um, that they said that uh, it's going to be two hours and it's still going to be live. But what I was thinking though is like, like you know how TNN uh, back when they were doing ECW used to have the, like that Friday night action block. But like you could do that and have because I mean they taped two of five live after SmackDown anyway. Just have that be like the add-on show for for uh-huh. you know, WWE Friday Night Live, you right? Know, on on FS One or, or, or so I guess it's going to be on Big Fox. Right, the, the regular Fox Network. Yeah, because there's so many exciting shows happening on Friday night on Fox. Right? <laughs> That's the notorious Friday night Fox death slot. Right. The exception of X Files, nobody makes it off of Friday nights. It's like Millennium is canceled, and you know anything else they put on on Friday night usually gets canceled on Fox. You know, Firefly I think was a Friday night Fox show for for yeah. you know, a week or That's two. That's kind of was like really. I mean, why are you guys putting this show on Friday? But hey, yeah. you know, who knows? But yeah. Okay. What uh, what do you have for All In? Well, you know, again, All In is coming up. Um, there's two things that's coming up this year, right? Uh, September, we've got All In, the, sh- the show that Cody Rhodes is putting together with the Young Bucks. Um, but we also have, which we'll talk about, the Jericho Cruise, which we didn't get a chance to talk about oh, last week. That's right, yeah. But, you know, first let's talk about All In. All In, um, you know, the big thing I wanted to talk about was what the uh, – with some speculation to some of the women. So, you know, we talked about Santana Garrett uh, being in NXT and probably being in the Mae Young Classic again. Uh-huh. Um, Diana Perrazzo, who's That's, kind of been off and on, yep. you know, um, apparently, you know, Cody tweeted out this week when somebody asked about booking Diana Perrazzo for All In, he basically said she can't make it. Um, so, um Basically, he says she's unable to do all in. They, uh, we love her. She's phenomenal. She's kicking ass, breaking arms, no matter where you see her. So that leads to speculation that uh, Diana Perrazzo, who was rumored to be at uh, all in, may now be appearing in the May Young Classic. Yeah, May. I, I think wasn't she in the the first May Young Classic? 
Perrazzo? I can't remember, to be honest. Off the I feel top like of my she head. was, and then maybe she did like a set or two of like NXT tapings. She did a bunch that, of she NXT like tapings. did uh, Women of Honor, I think. Yeah, I don't think she did the Man Classic. Uh, I, I think she might have been a standby on it. I'll have to go double check that one too. But I don't, I don't remember her being um, on that show. Um, the other one, of course, is Chelsea Green. Mm -hmm. um, Recently seen down at the, the development center with uh, yep. Robbie E. Oof, I don't know, man. <laughs> Maybe Oof. they'll team up him and, and, and Zach Ryder and they could be like Jersey Rose or something. Oh my gosh. That's another guy, right? Here's a guy that really <laughs> <Damn the> can. <laughs> Zach Ryder, you know, not to get back on WWE, but man, Zach Ryder. Here's a guy. Hey, we gave him the Intercontinental Championship only to lose it to the Miz next night. But and he's done nothing since then. That was right. what that was March. Well, he got, you know, he got his he got into that whole thing with uh um, Mojo, so Mojo, yeah. yeah, who who's also not on the Hulu version of, of Raw this week? Wow. Yeah, that was kind of a quick thing that they did with him and uh, his feud with No Way Jose. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, but getting back to All In, um, so with All In, there are still rumors that Vince and Triple H are targeting um, all these guys that are working for him. Um, you know, that being said, you know, there is a interview with Jim Ross and Kenny Omega where Kenny Omega, you know, basically says it'd be a missed opportunity if he wasn't able to wrestle some of these guys, which, you know, leads to maybe people wondering, you know, is once this, um, Year is up. Is Kenny Omega, current IWGP champion, will he be jumping to WWE? I, I, yes. I mean, I kind of wanted to, and then the other way, I kind of don't. Kenny Omega has a really good relationship with Austin uh, Creed, a.k.a. Xavier Woods of New Day. Mm -hmm. Again, if you haven't had a chance to watch their, um, their Street Fighter match uh, <laughs> on YouTube, fantastic. I want to see this. I'm a, I'm a Street Fighter 2 fan. <laughs> Yeah, oh, you haven't seen the you haven't seen this this uh, this no, video. From, it just yeah, sounds hilarious because I can picture these grown ass men, you know, just shit talking to each other over. over well, I'm telling video you, games. whether this was a work or whether this was real, I mean, I don't know. You know, you always start to question things like, is this real? Uh, one of the best booked matches I've ever seen in my entire life, um, as far as as far as video games concerned. Um, yeah, there's super kicks. There's habanero peppers. There's, <laughs> All this, all this greatness in this in this thing, and I, and I'm surprised it hasn't been pushed, uh, uh, you know, harder and harder. I did, uh, you know, if you check out, if you're a fan, uh, look us up on Facebook, um, No Cell Society, on um, Facebook. I did post a link weeks ago for that particular uh, clip of New Day versus the Elite, but I just don't know, man. I don't know if. Just being on the main event, the main roster would do any do. Well, I, I feel like they would get that uh, AJ Styles Royal Rumble pop. Like if they, if oh, they do 100%. Wrestle Kingdom, you know, and then three weeks later do Royal Rumble, it would be bananas. But um, I also am a big fan of like, okay, what's your plan for me? Well, you know, so it's like CM Punk was, was, I guess, notorious for like, okay, and then what? And then what? And then what? You know, it's like, what, what's the plan the next month? Where's my mm -hmm. character going? Right. Wait, what do you mean are all valid questions you should be asking? Like, yeah. if, you, if you, you know, give a shit and want to be in the main event, you know, lay it out for me. What, right. what's, your, what's your plan? Just, like, sit out from for New Japan? Or do you really want to push me to the moon and let's make some money? I mean, you know, I think there's, there's so much this publicly traded company does just out of spite. And it's just, you know... It's like, dude, you're not doing it for the greater good of the fans or the product. You're just doing it because we have all this excess cash. Right. I mean, it's like you just signed a five-year deal with Fox and a five-year deal with USA. Well, that's the thing. They have to start putting in good content. And that's why they I don't, though. 
I mean, they're, they're well, I mean, if it's going to be on Fox, you know, that's the thing. They they need to put, start putting out big content. I believe they do because, you know, you want to get that buzz. To, but I don't think they have to. Well, I mean, again, you look at cruise, it, we, you know? we talked about it. That Friday night is such a is such a bad spot because, you know, again, who's watching TV on Friday nights? People are going out, you know, and people uh-huh. are doing things, and it's 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 such a you know that's why Tuesday night's such a great night for SmackDown because, you know, it's 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 a Tuesday night, but to to expect that people are gonna you know after a work week you know just sit there and like I'm gonna watch wrestling right now for two hours I don't I don't think that's um I don't think it's viable so what do you do you have to make great content you must make what they call again must see TV in order for people to engage and when you have guys like Daniel Bryan uh, Samoa Joe um, oh shoot uh, Ty Dillinger all these guys um, make use of them as much as possible make use of but, them but I mean, I also feel like it's kind of like it's so cheaply produced entertainment versus like a scripted tv show there's like ah we'll just you know we'll throw wrestling on there because it's true it cost as much as like bones or but you, you know, but you still need to make it compelling where people shows. are talking about it and watching it oh, right totally totally i mean I, mean, I, I, I want it to be good i want it to be like yeah. tv but but i just i i feel like there's too much you know outside of like nxt i, I feel like it's just like a lot of laziness like you're seeing it in the writing on raw right now right or it's just kind of like, eh, we'll, we'll get there. So well, you in know, five weeks. We'll like, see whatever. what happens. I mean, I'm sure Vince is going to want to have a stamp of approval on it. But again, again, you know, he's doing XFL right now too. Mm-hmm. And so then that's what I'm saying. So maybe he he doesn't care, and it's just like maybe Fox will buy it from me. You know, D- does that happen v- versus like him turning it over eventually to to you know Stephanie and Triple H? Is it just like we'll have somebody buy it out from us? You know, Fox how this all this. Uh, disposable income now they sold all their movies you know it's like right. what are you gonna do with well fox here's a, but it's not fox anymore is it yeah, well it's like what fox news corp or, or well is it fox still i mean does i, I you know again we're, we're kind of referring to the whole disney buyout of fox right oh you're right well i thought that was just for the marvel stuff are Ooh. they buying are they buying fox like outright the only thing they're not buying is fox news wow they've accumulated fox's debt so the, the deal that i read you know if, if you include all the debt that fox has incurred that's an 85 million dollar purchase that they made for fox so you know again does that mean oh my god does it doesn't mean wwe becomes a disney property now <laughs> stephanie is the new disney princess <laughs> I don't know. Along with the Frankenfurter and the we, alien. We could be grossly <laughs> misinformed by all of this. But again, would I be surprised? No. The funny thing, you know, going back to some of these cons, you know, uh, I was uh, standing in line with a couple of these artists, and uh, one of these uh, one of these artists that I was speaking to, you know, she does fan art. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, she was talking about it, things like that. And apparently she had done the big con up in Seattle. Um, what's this con in Seattle again? Em- Emerald, Emerald City, City. Comic Con. Yeah, I was gonna say EC3 for some reason. <laughs> That's so, yeah, Emerald City Comic Con, yeah, Emerald City, yeah, EC3. No, um, Emerald City Comic Con, and I guess she was saying that there were some lawyers going around there. I, I don't know if this is true. This was just her either speculation or paranoia. I'm not sure, but she had mentioned that there's lawyers looking at licensed material and things like that. And then she's like, "But you know, I do mashups, so I should be safe." And I was looking at her, I was like, "What do you mean? Um, you know, I just mix two characters." I go, "Are you mixing two? original uh, an original character with another he's like no just you know um you know then she named a marvel character and she named a disney character and i go you do realize disney owns everything right and she's like oh yeah you're right (laughs) you think i'll get in trouble i go look you know it's like anything else people try to get away with it for as long as they can until they get caught Mm -hmm. you know (laughs) but that's just the way things work oh uh, getting back to Diana Perrazzo, yeah, sorry, we're kind of all over the place this evening, but yes, she was an alternate for the Mayan Classic. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, yeah, we'll see if 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 she does kind of get in um, or not. Uh, but again, she's not in part of All In. Um, I don't really have a card for All In in front of me other than Cody Rhodes. Um, there was some speculation last week. We were kind of. Uh, Somebody just announced today, uh, I forget who the opponent is, but Okada is on the card. New Japan, definitely. I could see that. I could see Naito coming over. Um, apparently, this is this is the one that confuses me, I know. Um, Jericho will not be part of the card, but... Well, there, there's, there's talk of, of why that is. I guess he won't work uh, North America against Vince. 
but he's working with TNA. What? Apparently, Chris Jericho is going to be working with TNA because of Don Callis. And huh. uh, again, you know, Ring of Honor, um, TNA, and maybe some New Japan guys will be on the Jericho cruise. Nice. So I've, I've seen that, that he wants to team with the Young Bucks, but the, the, they're hinting around that it, that it won't be on land. It'll be on sea. It'll be Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Who knows? Um, I don't know. It, it'll be interesting to see what, what they do. But, again, we've got two big indie shows. Well, not independent. Non-WWE shows coming up. Definitely want to see the matches. I hope – I do hope that they do – some type of video for the Jericho cruise and all in. I definitely would like to see what happens with all in, but uh, kind of what I was getting to last week, we're keeping up with the ROH pay-per-view. Uh, we thought that Cody Rhodes was going to win the title from Dalton castle and defend that title against Nick Aldis, the NWA champion, um, AKA Magnus, Nick mm -hmm. Magnus. Right. And yep. then um, to the shock of all of us, um, Dalton Castle retained, which I was pretty happy with. Then you tweeted or texted me the was it a day or two ago? The very, very next night, I believe. The very next night, yeah. oh my gosh, yeah, same, yeah. Thing. And you're like, hey, guess what? There's a new ROH champion. I'm like, what? Well, they, they sent out a press release saying that uh, the, this, this match from the TV tapings was going to be on uh, the Honor Club, and it's like, so you're taping weeks and weeks of TV. But you're gonna put this one match on, on Honor Club, and it just seems kind of suspect. Of like, that's the title change. That's gonna have to be weird. One second. Sorry, I'll have to definitely edit that part out. But no, that's all right. I mean, come on, look at this, man. I spent all this time right here on my Dalton Castle. <laughs> is that is that a custom fig? That's my custom fig. Yeah, that's the Dalton awesome. Castle. Thanks. And you're telling me that this guy's not the Ring of Honor champion anymore? No. Well, apparently he's he was like almost injured the entire time he was champ. Oh, really? Like I've heard, like, I've heard he's got like a it's either broken back or broken neck. And then oh he's got like God. nerve damage. Like I mean, like really bad. Like this guy needed to take time off. Oh my God! And from what I what I I, I heard that, that like I guess he was injured throughout the the match on uh, what do you call it uh, Friday? Because because wow. it was what like it was like a four corners like uh, you know so they could cover him basically. Jeez. You know, he could you know be thrown to the outside and they could still have a match and you know. But uh, I found out uh, Okada and Marty Skrull are going to have a match at All In. Nice. So that that should be pretty dang cool. Skrull. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen the villain Marty Squirrel, uh, do yourself a favor, YouTube that guy. I mean, I I was kind of hoping that he'd be in the WWE because I, I don't see him being on the indies in, in two years. I, I think he's on borrowed time for, for ROH in New Japan. But yeah. like I, I think this guy's a big deal. Like he would make a huge splash in, in either NXT or, or or the maybe the, the WWE NXT UK. Yeah. I guess I was saying I could definitely see him in the in the in the UK tournament, I think it'd be fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one of those that, like, if you brought him as a, in as a uh, surprise, like a takeover, like, you know, kind of like they did a run in with uh, Cole and, and Red Dragon on that one NXT, you know, show. Uh -huh. Like, the audience would just pop you know, huge if they're like, oh my God, Marty Skrull, the villain, you know, right. and let him keep his name. Like, that, that would. That would go over pretty huge. I well, think. even when he became part of the Bullet Club, you know, and they kicked out uh, Adam Cole, I thought that was a fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have like the umbrella with the the Bullet Club logo on there. It's just like, oh shit, you yeah. know. They got they got Marty Skrull. Fantastic yeah. guy. I, I could see him doing like a like a like a, a ROH uh, title run, but but again, this is one of those like Cole where where it's like I mean, because Cole wasn't champ for very long, was he? No, not, not I mean, that. It's like not that give, long. Him, give him like you know six months or less, and then like WWE signs him up. 
puts them on the payroll. Mm-hmm. Hey, make that money. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, like I said, um, it's it's tough though because you have all these guys coming to WWE. It's like, you know, what? Like we well, going back to what we're talking about the Fox thing, is mm-hmm. is again, if you have all these guys coming up, you, you really need to have some good storylines, some good content with them because that, I think that's what's really going to hurt the product by not not giving these fans um, what they need. And again, because now that they're going to be on cable, you know, basic cable rather than... Um, or it's like network TV. Extent, yeah, on network TV rather than, yeah, basic cable. Um, this is this is an opportunity for them to reach even more viewers. Now, again, you know, WWE still touts its, its viewership, its social media presence. But again, you know, having this deal on Fox, I, I you know, I'm I'm really interested to see how this works and it starts next year correct uh yeah yes yeah. it should be october of 2019 okay so well, well my question too is like with this being network tv does this get even more g-rated you know well i don't know because it's fox you know i think they can i think they can go pg because you look at what the program is and you look at what time they start showing it i mean you know is it is it going to be a 6 p.m show because of the east coast probably mm-hmm. um you know, it, you remember back in the days where they had to go from the from certain hour to certain hour was kind of PG, and then the second hour it got a little bit more raunchy and just kind of like, uh, are we back to that again? We could be. <laughs> I don't know, but you know, that being said, I'm excited to see what's happening, and I, I think there's um, there's a lot of good talent and not enough good storylines that are coming out, so. You know, we'll see what happens with that. It's one, one thing I saw, uh, like a shoot interview with Kevin Nash, he was talking about like there are only like nine stories in wrestling. You know, you've got like the 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 rookie fighting the veteran. You've mm-hmm. got like the the person chasing for the title. You've got like the the barbershop, you know, window tag team split. You know, right. <laughs> one becomes the good guy, one becomes the vet. I mean, it's 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 one of those where it's like it, it and with with so many people under their umbrella. Mm-hmm. You know, you burn yourself out. I mean, it's. Yeah. Like, it, it, I keep going back to more is more. You right. know, like preparing for this show, it's just like I, I watch like you know a, a, a binge watch of like five hours of WWE on on Tuesday evening. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> like I'm burnt out. Yeah, yeah. You, it's, that, you that, that's why out. NXT is so nice because it's only an hour. Right. You know, and all you and so much is packed. Yeah, and it's, it's so much packed in in that one hour. Even their takeover. I mean, you know, it's 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 like it's like four, five, five matches. matches. For, yeah. That's right. it. And that's, that's it. what you need. You know, you've got a, a a men's title, women's title, a tag title, and then you know a grudge match and and maybe like a a, a debut or or some kind of fancy flippy flop match. You know. Yeah. And, and it's you know that that's that's all you need. You know, it's a good need. two and a half hours. You know. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah. But it's wrestling, and we'll see what you know. We'll see what else is happening. Um. I want to go back to uh, Chris Jericho's cruise because, you know, there's been a big working storyline. I like what you said there. There is nine stories, um, and I'm going to have to look that up because I'm trying to think, you know, ECW kind of helped bring in, and, and the WWE to that effect, you know, um, is is a wrestler trying to steal another wrestler's wife, mm-hmm. part of that, you know, storyline thing. That's one of the things I like about GLOW, which I don't want to get too into this week. Well, next week, yeah, next week we'll, we'll have a all GLOW show. But you have, like, these tropes of, like, and there's a wedding, you know, and it's like, oh, no, you can't have a, a wrestling wedding go right. Like, there's always some kind of, you know, kerfuffle or some kind of, you know, thing break Well, down. you know, I mean, I guess you could kind of boil it down to because, man, the, the big story um, – you know, earlier this year was the reunion of the Golden Lovers, right? Kenta, mm-hmm. uh, Kota, sorry, Kota Ibushi and um, Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega, and um, you know, the whole big thing was like, are they gay? Are they not gay? Is it does it matter? You know, and you know, people may or may not realize is that you know, um, if you are if you follow manga at all or anything in the Japanese popular culture uh yaoi is a is a big thing and yaoi is um you know stories centered around boy love right Mm -hmm. not necessarily sex but you know love between two men kind of thing i mean yes it can involve sex but you know it's it's the story of you know two guys 
you know, finding, uh, you know, romance or commonalities of some sort. And, you know, good on Kenny and Kota for making it a big, you know, a big thing because there's a demographic for that, right? Yeah. So you know, where it's uh, like money on the table. Definitely. Right. Whereas, uh, you know, obviously we had like Chuck and Billy as a big story. <laughs> uh, <laughs> with, with, with Rico in the middle. With Rico. I mean, that's how Rico got called up, right? To be the. <laughs> Uh, the stylist. Rico and his, his, his sideburns. Uh, Rico. <laughs> Apparently, one of my coworkers is related to him. So, well, my former coworkers is related to him. So, I don't see why that guy doesn't do like a book or something, like on American right? Gladiators. You know, like there, there's, there's a Netflix documentary that hasn't been made yet on on like the story of American Gladiators, and, and like the same with like roller games, like these these wackadoodle like '90s kind of mishmash. It's it's not pro wrestling, but it's not real sports, but it's it's something in between, you know. With oh all my these gosh! I mean, that's the only reason why I watched Roller Roller Jam or whatever it was called was because uh -huh. it's kind of like one of those lead-ins to ECW. Yeah. Um, but there was I, I'm gonna have to look this up. But there was an older guy on the on the team that wore black and silver, um, and he was like one of the only guys to wear the old school four wheel roller skates where everybody had like the inline skates. Oh yeah. The quads. Yeah. And that guy was like, I thought I would always like that. Like the old Kaji veteran, just all. Well, yeah. they, they, they had one uh, in the, and, and this is like a, a sidetrack here, but there there's one in like the late eighties called uh, roller games. And they used to have like jumps with like uh, alligator pits and, you know, it it was all it was it was so funny because they had like a baby face team that's like the L.A. Angels or something, and they had like this this all black and gray team, kind of like the Raiders that are like the heel team, and then they had like a tiger stripe team that's kind of like the the in between. But they would always have like different matchups between the the kind of three uh, different tropes, so to speak. But uh, <laughs> I just remember because they had like a Nintendo game on the original NES. Yeah. Wow. But. <laughs> It was almost like a side scroll and beat him up more than it was like a, a race around the track kind of game. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, uh, going back to the 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 Chris Jericho cruise, um, I don't know. Has there been any more info on that? Or, or well, that? I mean, we're looking at um, as far as one of the stories that kind of developed. Um, I don't know if you've been following anything that's on TNA or sorry, Impact Wrestling. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're a big fan of Sammy Callahan, mm -hmm. you know, apparently, you know, he's kind of this out of control, um, kind of like a Brian Pillman esque character, <laughs> you know? Okay. I'm in. I'm and, listening. And, um, you know, he is trying to get on the, uh, <laughs> the Jericho cruise. And so, you know, who knows what's going to, you know, whether it's a work or shoot, you know, I've heard a uh, Callis kind of talk about it. You know, there was a match between Callahan and Eddie Edwards and, yep. you know, that, that ended up pretty being pretty brutal to where Eddie Edwards had to kind of change the style of wrestling now. Um, so uh, what, what, what specifically happened in that match with Eddie Edwards and Callahan? It was uh, from what I, because I haven't seen it either, but, but it, it was something to do with like a chair shot that went yeah. astray. Yeah, exactly. And and, uh, and I know like Chris Hero or, or Cassius Ono call, called him out on it mm -hmm. um, on social media. And it was one of those things. Like I'm a fan of both those guys. Like, right. like, like when when Sammy Callahan uh, was on the Indies before he went to to WWE for for the Solomon Crow run, um, he used to he'd cut these promos like on his phone. Um, and, and I know Gabe Sapolsky would run him for like evolve uh -huh. and, and it was just him like driving and, with like a, 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 I don't know what you call it, like a chew or, or a piece of tobacco in his mouth. And, and it's this guy is just really intense, really, really just, you know, like engaging. Uh -huh. And, um, it was one of those things, like I was super excited when WWE signed him. And then you see how that turned out and you're like, man, what a waste that this guy was just like, yeah, I got to get out of here like and go back to the indies like this this is not creatively um uh fulfilling but um yeah fantastic you know promo i think and, and a real missed opportunity as far as you know wwe and nxt goes yeah there's a lot to that guy like i saw a match between him and sabu in miami at that uh that miami wrestlemania 
And like, I must've taken 35 pictures because we were front row and uh-huh. it's like, man, you know, the homicidal, suicidal, genocidal Sabu versus this, this guy in a, in a, in a singlet with a wacky hairdo to, to one side, but they beat the shit out of each other. And that was a fantastic match. I mean, that was, that was, I think it was a dragon gate USA show, huh. but uh, that's one. If you, if you can find that one somewhere like that, that's worth checking out. I'll definitely have you might see that. me taking pictures of my, my, my original camera phone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my nice. old iPhone 4S in the front row. Huh. But uh, yeah, that, that was a good one. And that I means it's one of those things. Like like in their match, uh, I think it was the next night they had a uh, Pac, you know, who would be Adrian Neville in WWE right. against like Sabu. And you're just like, man, this is gonna be awesome because this guy, this guy's just wicked, you know, fantastic. I mean, he's built like a brick shit house, even if he's only like five nothing. Right. But but it's like he's fantastic though. Who cares about his size? Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know. <laughs> it's like stories of like four or five years ago, but, but yeah, but it's worth, you know, everybody's time if, if they're listening and looking for a match to, to look up. Yeah. I was, I was kind of high on Sammy Callahan in WWE. I was hoping they'd do something with him, but then, yeah, it just didn't kind of go anywhere. But what well, was a, a bad gimmick? You know, who, who's, who's a hacker in, you know, 2016 or 2015? <laughs> it's like, you know, this was new back in the '90s when you had like the Angelina Jolie movie. Right. It was like you know, ooh, we're hacking, and it's just like really, like I don't know. It could have been better if you had something like with Anonymous or, or you know, like the the 99 percent or, or whatever. Something. Yeah. But oh well, it's their it's their loss apparently. So we'll see we'll see what happens there. Uh, but yeah, I, apparently he's still trying to fight and get in to get in all in. Um, I'm sh- I'm sure with the way things are going, he'll probably get to be an all in. But um, you know, for the time being, he's still threatening the Ring of Honor and um, <laughs> other people. Impact anybody he can to, to kind of get on this cruise. So I mean, it might be a good selling point. I mean, if the Young Bucks are going to be there, um, Omega and all these other guys. I mean, I think. I think the cruise of Jericho will be a, a pretty decent show. I would, I would definitely go, um, mm-hmm. if uh, you know, personal life and other other avenues wa- weren't an issue. I would definitely look forward to trying to to get on that particular when, cruise. When is that that planned because all in is uh, like September, right? September, and then the cruise of Jericho is October. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. I don't know. Traveling outside of the United States now is kind of sketchy, even if it's on a ship and international waters. <laughs> yeah. Thinking, that and a bunch of wrestlers. It's like <laughs> that and a bunch of wrestlers. Recipe for disaster. Right. <laughs> Insert alcohol and or you know other oh recreational drugs. You know. Yeah, I hope you know. I hope he sells out, but yeah, yeah October, I think I think it will. October twenty seventh, and um, you know, leaves flees for the Bahamas. Um. I'm just trying to think. October 27th to the 31st, still Halloween. Um, I think that's one of those things, too. Like, they're going to be doing certain podcasts. Like, I want to say Cabana is going to be on that cruise. And I think Marty and Sarah from Marty and Sarah Love Wrestling might also be on there. Or or at least maybe maybe Marty DeRosa will be on there. Because, you know, he, like, he and Colt are buddies. And they do, like, the, the worst promo ever. And, and creative has nothing for you. And they used to do one called Five Dollar Wrestling. It was absolutely hilarious, right? And until it, kind of, <laughs> they kind of priced themselves into a corner. <laughs> it'd be like ten dollar wrestling. <laughs> Jeez, it's like two thousand dollars. I mean, I, I mean, if you're going on a cruise, that's not bad. But yeah, two grand. Mm-hmm. You know, is what you're looking for. Um, yeah, if you're on the eighth deck, uh, the owner suites looks like it's about eight grand. Goodness gracious. I'm just thinking, like, like as far as like this is this is far enough away from Mania, that that's why I think this will work, right? Because you know Mania is like in March, so you got about six to six, yeah, about six months in between, uh-huh. perfectly spaced, you know, right? But that's a lot of disposable income, though. But I mean, you got right. people that that went to the uh, the 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 New Japan show that I was at in March, yeah. for a Strong Style Evolved in uh, Long Beach, and you know they're they're going to be going to this one this weekend in San Francisco. So yeah, everybody's well, got their, their wrestling pilgrimage. Yeah, yeah, but you know the tickets weren't that outrageous. Oh were, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, how much was tickets? Oh, um, 
I, yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. It's been so long since I bought them. Like that sold out in like in half an hour though. Right. But you weren't spending like a couple of grand on tickets, were you? No, no, yeah. no. You know, if, even if you're spending like a hundred bucks on tickets, which I, do, which I doubt you did. Mm -mm. Yeah. That's still, still a decent price show to go to. I mean, again, most wrestling shows like on the independents, you know, they, they usually rain anywhere from 10 to $20, right? Mm-hmm. On the bigger shows, you know, obviously it's a little bit more. You can run up to like sixty to eighty dollars and a hundred, depending on where you want to sit. Yeah. But you know, as far as uh, as far as the indies goes, what we work in on the circuit, yeah, we that's nowhere near what uh, you know people are charging right now. So yeah, two grand's a lot. So you definitely got to be a good fan, a big fan, you know. <laughs> if I mean, if it, but you know, if it if it allows me to see. Um, well, is that too? Is that like the basic package, or is that like the premium package? That's like the basic package. Well, I mean, oh, because it goes gosh. by like where you're where you're sitting uh -huh. in the or where your where your where your um, cabin is is kind of like how they've done this on the boat. And I mean, you know, obviously to rent a or to lease or whatever a, a cruise ship is not cheap. So, uh huh. <laughs> yeah. So the thing is, maybe Vince will hire like somebody to to sink it. And then all the competition is gone. <laughs> I got a quarter of the New Japan roster and half the ROH roster. And <laughs> one torpedo. <laughs> yeah. Right? One foul swoop. <laughs> Crazy. Mm. Well, let's move on to some other news <laughs> then. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, interested. I'm interested to see what happens. Um, you know, uh, I was going to say, like, if... Uh, you know, if, you give me, if it gives me front row seats to uh, Don Callis chewing out Disco Inferno, then you know I think <laughs> I think the uh, the five grand would be worth it. But you know, you never know. Um, yeah, alcohol funny. and wrestlers. I don't know. If that's a great combination. But there's, 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 uh, WCW did that back in the day. The Bruise Cruise. Remember? I kind of vaguely do. I'm just thinking, like all the dudes that probably took their their girlfriends and wives on the cruise, and then like they come back single or, or you know right. <laughs> messed around on. It's just like, but Buff Bagwell, you know, it's just like don't 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 support this. Right. <laughs> go to shows, don't, don't go on cruises. That's, that's I don't know. Buff Bagwell, oh, boy. <laughs> just a gigolo. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Craziness. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's move on to some pop cultural news. Um, this week, actually tonight, was the release of uh, Ant-Man and Wasp, another Marvel movie. Um, any plans on seeing that this week? Uh, I think I'm going to... Uh, I think we're going to try and go see that on Saturday. Nice. Um, my, my, my girlfriend's mom is a big like pop culture fan. Oh really? So, so she won't like go see like indie stuff. But, uh, I was asking her, I was like, you think your mom would want to go see this? And she's like, yeah, but like, like we went and saw solo together and, and it's like, you know, as long as you're not a star Wars fan, it's a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a big, <laughs> dumb, expensive, leave your brain at the door popcorn movie, you know? Right. <laughs> I, I that and Deadpool too the two movies I haven't had a chance to see yet because of the conventions. Um, been I, I don't want to plug that movie, but it's hilarious. It, it's uh, one of those where Solo? it's just like I, no uh, Deadpool too. Why don't you want to plug it? I just I, I'm I'm not a fan of like breaking the fourth wall. Like I was talking oh, to really? our buddy CJ about this. I was huh. like, remember when John Byrne did the run on She Hulk? Yeah. Like it was funny then, but I'm like I remember when Liefeld had you know this character out and he was like a villain. He wasn't like the, this, you know, clown cracking jokes and right. you know this merc with a mouth. It was just like, no, he's a, he's a villain. Right. He's a cool, cool bad guy. It'd be like a, if you liked GI Joe and Storm Shadow started like, you know, winking at the audience and you know, you know, acting silly. It's like, no, this is a badass dude. Like he's, you know, like it's it's a cool design for a character. But uh, no, those movies are hilarious. I can't say anything bad about him because it's just like as much as I want to hate him. Yeah, this is not the Deadpool that Rob Liefeld hilarious. did. You know, yeah. no, there there is a joke though about uh, I think small feet or small hands. Yep. Or something. There, there's kind of like a, like a little 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 wink you know, and nod. Wink and a nod. Yeah. I mean, it, it's pretty funny. But no, I I liked it. Um, mm. that, that's one I, I I'd say if you haven't seen it, check it out. Yeah, definitely have to check it out. Uh, but you do plan on seeing Ant Man and the Wasp? Yeah, I was gonna ask. So is Michelle Pfeiffer um like the original Wasp? Is that I mean, is this like spoiler? But maybe not. <laughs> you know, it's like I haven't seen it yet. I don't but, know. 
But I was like, like you know, you're, you go into Ant Man and you're expecting like Hank Pym, and then you're just like, oh wait, like he's the old guy, like, but that's Ant Man, you know. And it's the like the Scott Lang character. Some like is is, is it Janet Van Dyne the the name of the the character that was the Wasp. Yep. Yeah. And it's like, is that going to be like? Is her mom the wasp? Is that well? It's know? weird because it was like you know I don't know I I'm kind of all over the place with Marvel characters you know like I, I I've actually liked Hank Pym mm-hmm. uh, you know the creator of the Pym particles you know um, the, that's like the, the original father of Ultron right but yep. they kind of like tied it into to Stark for the movie's sake right no this is exactly it you know Hank Pym was Giant Man yeah you know. Um, he was the yellow jacket, you know, so he's got a lot of different other. So that was kind of weird, too, when they kind of showed the, you know, that was the main villain. The first um, Ant-Man movie was the, the, the yellow jacket costume. And I was just kind of like, oh, that's weird, because I did like the yellow jacket um, in the Avengers. Yeah. But, you know, hey, it is what it is. Yeah, Janet Van Dyne. And then, you know, there's this whole tumultuous relationship between Pim. You know, there was the, the alcoholism, mm-hmm. uh, the domestic abuse, and all this other kind of stuff that was happening. So That's one of the things I was really interested in when, when yeah. they announced Ant-Man. I was like, oh, that's kind of adult-oriented. Like, are right. they going to, you know, even hint at that? Or, or I mean, it's like, no, an they, they, they kind of, yeah, they kind of went... It was kind of like Stark being an alcoholic. It's like, ah, he has a drink in the scene. Yeah. You know, not like he, well, yeah, that's what I thought. In a really bad way, and needs a new liver. My wife wasn't really familiar with with the original comics, so you know, um, when she found out that Robert Downey Jr. was going to be playing Tony Stark, she's like, "Is that the right choice for a character?" I go, "I go, absolutely, absolutely." <laughs> you know, if you ever go, I mean, if there's anybody who knows about addiction and stuff like that, it's Robert Downey Jr. Right. And you know, I, to this day, I still think he's the best casting of the Marvel character. Um, no, I'd agree with that. You know, uh, here's the thing, and we're going to get into this because there's a couple of things we want to talk about. We'll get into we'll get into the whole Batman controversy in just a second. <laughs> but um, you know, everybody, you know which you, you, we've all gotten to this argument before, right? Who's the best superhero character? And everybody at some points brings up Batman because of his ability to outthink, you know, the scenarios and situations, right? Mm-hmm. You know, everybody talks about like, oh, you know, who went in a fight between Batman and, and Superman? And everybody, well, there's a lot of people, I shouldn't say everybody, basically puts their vote on Batman because he'd he think his way out of it, right? Um, well, well, it's not so much that. He, he, he would be that Ric Flair dirtiest player in the game. Yeah, yeah, like he oh, yeah, he he'd, he'd reach into his tights and pull out like a kryptonite ring and nutshot Superman, you know. All right. Well, <laughs> then I he, mean, did he tell the ref like, no, 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 there's nothing here. It's like the old Amazon and uh, pro wrestling for the NES. Right. He's you know, like, I don't have anything. You don't see anything. Well, it's that it's that uh, <laughs> someone was saying like, it's yeah. that whole, um, I guess egocentric idea that the human spirit can overcome overcome anything mm-hmm. and you know that whole batman argument kind of encompasses that in a nutshell where you think here's a here's a guy that can you know with no superpowers you know nothing but he can still overcome all these um deficiencies and and odds in order to to beat uh, anybody you know that whole famous scene about um if you watch the Justice League cartoon where Batman basically has a scenario for every superhero that, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. in case one of them goes rogue and, you know, apparently he has the one of them. Tower, tower rogue. Devil, right? Yep. Yep. And uh, it's a brilliant episode, especially when, like, yeah, he even has one for himself, you know. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> um, but, you know, we look at that and then, you know, again, people just kind of strip it all down. So, like, well, you know, at the end of the day, all Batman is is a guy with a lot of money. You know, uh-huh. that's it. And you, you look at somebody like Tony Stark, you know, that's basically, <sighs> I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for saying this, but, you know, basically it's Marvel's Batman. Uh-huh. So, yeah. you know, who would you, who would you rather back it or have the backing of Batman or Iron Man and, and why? Ooh. Um, I don't know. I, 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 is it, it, are, are we talking movie movie version or or? Comic That's a great version? question. That's a great question. So like, <laughs> again, I, because I, I brought I'm up Robert better against Kevin Conroy. That, that's that's well, the, the end mean, all be all for me. You know, the, the start of the conversation was because of um, uh, Tony Stark being portrayed by uh, Robert Downey Jr. So let's go with the movies. Ooh, and if um, we say, you know what, Ben Affleck does not exist in this universe. Right? <laughs> 
and I don't care what anybody says. So, um, well, I, I really know, like, we're, uh, going with, we're going with Christian Bale. Yeah, I really like Batman Begins. Like, I, I really like it's kind of year one ish where it's like he, he's not got all his shit together and is kind of making mistakes. Um, but I mean, I, I'm a big American Psycho fan too, though. So I mean, it's 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 kind of like, oh, that's gonna be Batman. Yeah, I'm in. Like, I'm sold. Like, you sold my ticket before it was even filmed. Um, uh, but I mean, I don't know the kind of the kind of uh, snarky, stark Robert Downey Jr. Uh, I like too, though. You know, so in a movie, the, the, in a movie, because you know, eventually, uh, Disney will probably own. The, DC property, I don't, you know, that's just my <laughs> bold prediction. And they did a crossover movie, so if it was Batman, Christian Bale Batman versus uh, Robert Downey Jr., uh, Iron Man, who would you put your money on? Uh, I, I still got to go with Batman. He fights dirty. Oh. It, it's whatever it takes to get the job done. And you don't, think, like you don't think Tony Stark does that in the movies? Uh, I feel like he's got a heart. Like he he wouldn't get as dirty. Well, let's look at let's look at what happened with like Infinity he's a little bit more War. Genuine. Okay, and if you haven't watched Infinity War already, too bad we're spoiling it right now. You've had <laughs> enough time to watch that movie. <laughs> so we look at what happens when Tony Stark fights Thanos, you know, and of course, um, uh, uh, Star Lord ends up messing everything up because Thanos ends up killing Gamora, his adopted daughter, in order to obtain, you know, the final gems for the infinity gauntlet so if you look at how tony stark or aka iron man was there with the technology and that's what i like about iron man like for me if i had to put that spider uh, movie batman over movie iron man i'd probably go with movie iron man just because the technology is 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 way more creative than what you know batman has sure he has some Definitely. pretty you know clunky looking giant vehicles and stuff like that but you know <laughs> that whole arachnid suit that he did for you know iron spiders you know oh, spider-man totally. i don't know i mean and then of course you know the quips and everything that they have it seems like there's always a smart ass hero in in um in the marvel universe where you know um in the dc universe everybody's a little bit more serious very serious right these are so, serious batman voice and, and serious <laughs> Superman who can't save his dad, but was, uh, let's not even get into that movie. Um, <laughs> Your mom's name is Martha too. Oh God! Uh, Do we just become best friends? Oh, yeah, Jesus! <laughs> it's like oh, uh, guys. oh my God! You know, if, uh, if if this new Aquaman movie talks about Martha being Adam Curry's mom, I'm just gonna lose it. But anyway, um, yeah. So I mean, that's why I kind of would I, I would kind of lean more towards. Um, Iron Man than I would Batman at this point, but you know, even if you look at the interaction between uh, Robert Downey Jr. and um, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, that was amazing. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I don't know. Like, I'm not big on 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 Doctor Strange. Really? Yeah, I just I, I don't know. But like, not not so much. Like, I mean, to me, it was always like it was a fun guest star. Mm. But, but I just, uh, I liked his, I liked his. And again, it's another one that, you know, isn't, it, it seems like there's a lot of alcoholics in the Marvel universe. <laughs> uh, Cause you know, uh, yeah. Stephen Strange was also an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. um, it's a 70, 80 beer. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what you did um, to numb the pain. <laughs> 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 yeah. Numb the pain. You're even an alcoholic. Um, I don't know. There was something about uh, you know Doctor Strange and uh, Cleo and uh, Dormammu, you know mm -hmm. that that I found kind of appealing. So you know, I hope they kind of go with a little bit more. You know, at this point though, um, I don't know. I would definitely like to see a valid kind of fight between Batman and Iron Man. I'm sure if we put a poll up, most people would probably say that Batman would be the winner if uh, those two guys got in a fight. And nothing wrong with that. I would just, I just like to see in the, if it was comic book Iron Man versus comic book uh, Batman, I'd probably go with comic book Batman. Uh, if it's movies, I'll go with movie Iron Man. Is there an animated Iron Man? Uh, not really. <laughs> I was say Batman the animated series is like my favorite. Oh, that, Batman. yeah, that that's that is also my favorite Batman as well too. Hands down. But again, you kind of see where like I love the fact that you know Batman the animated series was never really about Batman. You know, it was about the villains. Uh -huh. 
Mm-hmm. And in some cases, you know, you can you can make an argument that the reason why the villains are the way they are is because of Batman. So, yeah, yeah, it's a it's kind of a compelling it's a compelling show. Um, definitely, definitely a, a series that still stands the test of time, in my opinion. Oh, I think so. I definitely think so. But getting into the big news this week, uh, was it a writer for a publication apparently spoiled? The latest issue of Batman with the headlines, which was Dave, please enlighten us. Uh, I, Batman got married or, or, or was to get married on the 4th of July. Um, I, I know this because I, I was hanging out with my friend CJ at, at our local comic shop on the 4th of July. Um, I did not get this issue, <laughs> but he kind of spoiled some of it for me. I guess uh, this was like, was it Time Time Magazine or the New York Times maybe? New York, I believe. Apparently they yeah. spoiled the whole damn thing though. Yeah. Like totally screwing over retailers who had ordered, you know, dozens and dozens of copies. But I, but I know at my store in particular, they had like a wedding cake too. So Wow. Yeah, they had wedding yeah. cake? Nice. I was like, who wants a free issue or a pin? Get the cake. It's all about the cake. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> I guess without getting too much into it, then we just go to the gist of, the gist of it, obviously, which has been you know circulating through so- social media. Like, again, I don't think this is a big spoiler because it's already been spoiled. Is that Batman ends up getting married to Selena Kyle, hmm. that woman. Doesn't she like she leaves him at the altar or something? I like I like I, he didn't finish telling me about it, but <laughs> I know but that, that the epilogue is like Catwoman number one or something. Right. But apparently that's what that was out there. I guess the question I was trying to get to was like, would that be the right choice for Batman in your opinion? Would it be Catwoman yeah. or should it be somebody else? This should be nobody. It's it's like James Bond. It's oh. like if you've ever seen on Her Majesty's Secret Service, the the one with George Lazenby. That's the one film where, where he gets married to to Diana Rigg, and then they 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 it's like no he's James Bond, uh-huh. he's like ladies man like eternal bachelor. He, 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 you you humanize him when you make him you know have a family and somebody to care about. You know he's not this lone wolf like you know angry I am the night guy. He, he's you know hey I got a family too now, so you know I I, I think you know. That's, that's a it, it, it's a it's a sales tactic, you know. Right. Oh, well, of course. But, but but yeah, no, Batman doesn't need to get married, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like you know I, I can't take comics seriously anymore. I mean, you know, Captain America died, Wolverine died. I guess Wolverine is still dead. <laughs> I just wait till you get to my comics pick for the week. <laughs> oh, definitely. Um, <laughs> it's like I'm going to buy this and regret this, but right? this is hilarious. So. Hey. Like, I have to I have to check this out for, if it, for the listeners. Yeah, if it makes you laugh, you know, might as well check it out, right? So they don't spend their three ninety nine of hard hard earned money on it. Right. <laughs> like, like this guy did. <laughs> well with that being said, I mean obviously is there anything else you wanted to cover in the pop culture where we, you know, um, talked a little bit of a Batman, but we don't need to, you know, obviously there's uh, you know, you can go out and buy the comic, check it out, you know, see what happens. Again, you know, if we spoiled it for you. Um, I don't support, think support your local comic shop, but, uh, but maybe you don't need that issue of Batman. Right. <laughs> you could find some kind of indie local comic that's pretty cool. All right. So the end of that, Dave, what's your uh, comic pick of the week? All right. So I've got two. The, uh, the the big bad one that like everybody can get their hands on is uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider number one. Cosmic Ghost Rider number one <laughs> from Marvel Comics. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, and and I picked this up, with, you know, like like after I started hearing about it, but I, I didn't know this before. You know, I saw it solicited, but apparently it's it's Frank Castle, the Punisher. <laughs> uh, got I think he gets murdered, then he gets resurrected by like Mephisto, then he becomes a herald of Galactus. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I was like. This this is like the biggest shit show of shit shows. I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna try an issue. So um, it, it, it's it's a wackadoodle story, and <laughs> this is like a what if from back in the seventies. It's totally 80s, like right? a what if. Well, I remember like like back in the day, there was a uh, there was an issue of Guardians of the Galaxy that had like a, a like a Ghost Rider, some dude that had like this giant skull bike, huh. and, and it's like, well, and was it Lobo? Huh? No, no it was Lobo. <laughs> That's, that's a good, that's a good eye. Um, 
but no, it's like, like, how is his head on fire in space? It's like, I don't know comic books, you know, right, exactly. it's just like, it just looks cool. Comic books, yep. <laughs> it's like there's chains and black leather and there's a skeleton with his head on fire. Just, just buy it, you know? Right. Um, so yeah, so that, that's, that's pretty bad. And, but I mean, it's funny though. I mean, if it, if it gets you to laugh or cry or, or, or you know, have a good time, like, you know, Hey, what's one issue. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think I'll be picking up issue two of that. Oh man. And, and, and then for, for like a kind of a local pick, um, it's not exactly new, but, uh, I, I, I met these guys at, uh, Dink, uh, year, last year and then bought issue five of this book. It's called ISIS, E Y E S Y S. Uh, and, and the pitch that they gave to me, it was, it was about a serial killer in Denver, Colorado. So I was like, okay, number one, this doesn't take place in, in New York or LA. And, and so like, I'm already interested it's local. Um, so, you know, so, so there's places outside the U S of, of, you know, LA and New York where they, they have comic stories based. Um, but it's a, it's like a female serial killer, uh, in Denver. And, um, I, I met the guys that, 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 wrote and drew it and um it's just one of those things where it's like i, I picked up i think one and two f and five from them at dink and then went to mutiny info comics or uh, mutiny info cafe on uh south broadway in denver where uh, our buddy alan brooks uh records his motherfucker in a cape podcast on the second wednesday of the month plug plug um and, and picked up issues i think uh, three and four Nice. So, so, so I, I I sat down one night and read all five, and um, it's just yeah, it's it's very violent, very very adult oriented, but again, it's kind of like this is different. This is you know, but it, but it's kind of one of these where it's like uh, this woman becomes a vigilante after a, a random encounter with somebody where she's you know barely escapes, and then um, it kind of goes from from there. <clears throat> But but it but it's not like you know she has superpowers or anything. Hmm. Like after the fifth encounter with somebody, she uh, I want to say like loses an eye or, or something, hmm. and um, it kind of goes from there. But but just super super like not for kids. Um, but again, local. So you know if you're looking for a black and white indie book and you're 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 here in Colorado, you know, and you can get a copy of it. Like check that out maybe. Nice. But yeah. Well, let's end up this show for this for this particular week. Um, we'll take a look at um, Glow next week, as well as our picks for um, Extreme Rules coming up one week from this Sunday. Uh, but that being said, what's our match of the week, Dave? Uh, match of the week, I, I would say uh, Mustafa Ali versus Buddy Murphy. If yeah. You have access, well, actually, I don't think you even have to have access to, to the WWE Network. I think these are maybe on Hulu. Um, and, I know there's some highlights on YouTube that you can check out, uh, definitely, and the WWE uh, website as well. Uh -huh. um, yeah, definitely. I'm going to have to agree with you on that note. Um, but it's, like, it's a good long match, though. You know, if, yeah. you, if you have a spare, like, 20-plus minutes, give or take, um, it's an ODQ match, and it goes, uh, I wouldn't say out into the audience, but all around the ring. Yeah, At there's least. a there's a couple of good power bombs in there that uh, you definitely have to check out. Uh, they are building a, a pretty good story between uh, Cedric Alexander and Hideo Itami, but you know Buddy Murphy is still coming up as a as a as a great potential um, again candidate. But uh, yeah, definitely off the chart if you want to watch a decent match, uh, wrestling match where this is where 205 needs to be. Then again, I also highly recommend the Buddy Murphy and Mustafa Ali match. Excellent. Well, that's our show for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. I know we kind of went all over the place this week, but next week again, we're definitely going to be covering us. We'll, we'll be recapping season one and season two of Glow. Uh, and like I said earlier, we'll also be talking about Extreme Rules. And Dave will be back with more picks of his comics of the week. And again, you can check out uh, these comics at your look from the local comic book store. If not, um, ISIS available at Mutant Information Cafe. You can always check them out on Facebook as well. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like this particular show. We're we'll bringing it to you every week, as well as check out our Facebook, No Soul Society, uh, where we'll be posting a little bit more links of what we are doing in the Denver, Colorado area. And again, if you ever want to check out a decent 
different type of wrestling show. Check out my good friends at Lucha Libre and Laughs. They just had a show tonight, but next month, uh, I believe August 10th, they'll be having a, another show at the Oriental Cafe, uh, Oriental Cafe, sorry, the Oriental Theater, uh, a little bit different from a cafe. You can check them out, August 10th, Lucha Libre and Laughs. Uh, Dave and I will be there, and if you're there, come say hi. A fantastic little venue. Yeah. In December. So, this week, Dave, what are we no-selling? Uh, no-sell Extreme Rules. No-sell Extreme Rules. <laughs> I want it to be good, but I don't have a lot of faith in it. Don't have a lot of faith in it. Yes, <laughs> awesome the writing. It's just like uh, I don't know. Oh, fair. yeah. <laughs> prove me oh, wrong. <laughs> prove me. Prove us wrong, please. Yeah, make this a show. Excellent. Well, for Dave Jassif, I'm Gerard G. Taihui. Saying this week, no cell extreme rules. We'll see you guys next week. Stay safe. <laughs>